the right. BYU baseball heads back to the diamond. There's a ball hit very deep. Left fielder looking up, going back at the wall. It's out of here. And the Batcats are swinging for the fences. Center fielder going back. He's not going to get there. It's time for BYU baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Play ball. Live coverage of BYU baseball is brought to you by Lube Duck, Reinhardt Oil, Chip Cookies, Sag Chevron, Foot Insurance, and Revere Health Orthopedics. Now, to get you ready for the first pitch, here's Brent Norton. Now, welcome to Smith Ballpark on the right here in the middle of Salt Lake City, BYU and Utah tonight. Brent Norton joined by Scott Haas. And, uh, Scott, uh, you joined us, what, two, three weeks ago as the Utes uh, played the Cougars for the first time this year. And always a big game. Cougars have dominated the series, winning 245, losing 116. But, uh, like last game, uh, extra inning game, uh, Cougars uh, held on to win 7-6. Yeah, we had the situation where BYU gives up four in the ninth, <laughs> which was, you know, it seemed like that game was in the bag. But as a classic rivalry always plays out, a uh, situation where that went extra innings, BYU got the, the win on the pass ball walk off. Uh, but another one, two out of four, right? We've got uh, three games two more left after this. Yep. After this, but uh, second game of the big series. And of course, everything switches here. You know, the Utes are coming off a big, big series win against the number one team in the nation. And so BYU has its hands full uh, with the Utes today. And Cougars coming off a very disappointing weekend at Pepperdine. They won the middle game, but, boy, they let that uh, last game get away from them. And, and as I look back in the conference, they're, they're now 3-6. and six. Uh, You know, they've probably given three or four games away, just just handed it to the other, t- uh, other conference foes. And Cougars have really... Like Coach Littlewood said in his pregame show, he's, they've got to win four this week. Well, we've had the pitching in most games to win, and that's what you know. Coach Littlewood talked about that. Jordan Wood, Wood pitched. Uh, I think he only gave up four hits and one walk in that uh, first game against Pepperdine in the loss, 2-0. to zero. Just didn't have any offensive support. And not only that, but the Cougars had seven hits but just couldn't get those. It's the timely hits that BYU really is looking to, to put into play this go-round. No doubt about it. And uh, a few minutes ago, I had a chance to sit down with Coach Mike Littlewood, talk a little about last week and also the big game tonight against Utah. Let's play that for you now. We're here with Coach Mike Littlewood. And, Coach, it's Tuesday. That must mean four big games again this week. Uh, Utah and then Santa Clara this weekend at home. And, uh, boy, it doesn't get any easier just to grind. and uh, But fun. And it should be a fun week of baseball. Well, it is a huge week for us. We were just talking in the dugout as a staff that we need four wins this week, but you can't look at it like that. You have to look at it one game at a time. Um, and tonight, obviously, with Utah, they don't get bigger than this. So we'll, we'll probably go staff day again today. Hopefully Bo will give us a good outing to, to get us off to a good start. Um, and the script would have Zimmerman coming in at the end to try to save it for us today. So we'll see how it goes. Well, Utah, two of three out of, from Oregon State, who was the number one ranked team in the nation up here in Salt Lake last weekend. So... Utes six and twenty, but they're on a bit of a roll right now. Well, they are. They're playing well. They have they have some confidence. Um, they're swinging at one through nine, and uh, they have Kersey back in the lineup as a DH, and he's a big big piece of their puzzle. Um, and it's kind of you know, it's kind of nerve wracking to, to face a team that that is playing so well, and, and you play them at home. But I mean, I, I guess that's why we do this. You know, that we we love the competition. We love just getting in there and and battling. But um, they're they're a better team now than they were when they played us the first time, and they're a much better team when they opened up their season. I mean, they had a lot going on. They didn't have Coach Kinnenberg the first 14 games. He's back, I mean, steady and kind of steadying the ship. Um, and you can just see that um, just go keep doing what you're doing. And I, and I really firmly believe that if we keep playing solid baseball, I mean, we're 14-12. and 12. We, You'd like to obviously, you know, be 30-2, and two, but that's just not the case. So um, we're in a good spot as far as playing, confidence and all that stuff, and, and uh, we just need to stay the course. One bright spot for you, Nate Favero, really started swinging the bat a lot better those last two days, kind of like what we saw out of him last year. Well, we need that from Nate. Uh, last year he was an under-the-radar guy, had a couple huge hits for us, triple against San Diego to help us win the series, and he would you know, he would kind of s- sit down in the 6, 7, 8 hole in our lineup, and we need him now, although I think he's, I've got him hitting 7 tonight, but we need him in the 5, 6 hole producing runs for us, and, and those guys – they have to get two out hits. I mean, that's just if you win, if you want to win ball games and and you want to win two thirds of your ball games, you have to get two out hits with with runners in scoring position. And we've been inconsistent doing that. Once that happens, I mean, I think we'll just get on a little bit of a roll. Got Kyle Dean in the lineup with a lefty on the hill for Utah. He's another guy that showed flashes last year of of being able to carry this team. 
but just haven't seen it again this year. And just, uh, you know, three or four guys like that is kind of, in my mind, it's kind of been the difference. I totally agree with you. I think Kyle's got, uh, well, I know he's got the tools to get it done. And, you know, in athletics, a lot of times you have to get your mind set in line with your tools. And so you, so your tools can play on the field. And, uh, it, it, you know, Kyle's a hard worker. He's doing what he needs to do with Trent in the morning hitting. Uh, he's doing what he needs to do in practice to get better. Uh, his, his attitude's been great. And so really it's just a matter of, hey, here's another chance against his left-hander, fresh, uh, redshirt freshman, I believe he is. Um, just to go out and prove yourself, and hopefully something's going to click because uh, we, we would be a better team if Kyle Dean's playing like Kyle Dean can play for us. Well, Coach, uh, again, uh, always fun playing the Utes. Uh, Cougars have really dominated Utah over the over the years, but it's always a battle. Uh, like we saw, what, about a month ago in, in Provo, uh, an extra inning game. Uh, so it should be a fun night. Uh, good luck, and uh, we'll talk to you in the postgame show. All right. Thanks a lot, Brent. All right, back here at Smith Ballpark, uh, Brent Norton and uh, Scott Haas. Uh, just a few moments before Utah and BYU. And, Scott, the um, the Cougars have won uh, 245 games against the Utes while losing only 116 and two ties. But it is amazing. It seems like most of them are pretty competitive, even though the Cougars are more than a 2-1 edge. Yeah, you look at the history, and, and you, know, you have to go back, and they didn't play as many times you know, historically as they do right now. So you had, you know, situations where you're playing a couple times a year. You know, back in the day when I was playing, we they were in the Mountain West Conference right. with us. And so we played a three-game series, uh, you know, uh, throughout the season, and, and that was pretty much it. So, um, yeah, BYU's definitely got the edge. But right now it'll be interesting to see, you know, with this, uh, you know, left-hander coming up, Riley Pierce for the Utes. He's only got a couple appearances this year uh, pitching at home. And how he establishes himself and Bo Burrup again getting the start, which is exactly what Coach Littlewood did last time, starting Burrup on the mound uh, for the Cougs in this game against the Utes. And Burrup started last Tuesday against UVU and just about gave him five innings. So I'm sure Coach Littlewood would like to see the same kind of thing. And then Burrup was available for the Saturday game down at Pepperdine, gave him a couple of good innings down there too. So he's kind of been become the de facto Tuesday starter for the Cougars. Let's go over the starting lineups. Force for the Cougars, uh, Brennan Anderson's going to lead it off. He'll play at second base. He'll be followed by Jarrett Perns, the center fielder. Daniel Sneeman at shortstop, bats third. Brian Sue, they move into the cleanup spot, playing at first base. Brock Hale moves down to five. He'll play in right field. D.H. Keaton Kringlin, just about over that little hamstring pull, but they've still got him in that D.H. role. Nate Favero at third base, bats seventh. Kyle Dean in left field, bats eighth. And Noah Hill will bat ninth and be behind the plate for the Utes. Uh, defensively, Shea Kramer behind the plate. Braden D. Benedictus is at first base. Oliver Dunn at second. Matt Richardson at short. Riker Tom is at third base. Wade Golden in left. Davis Delaforest is in center. And Eric Miguelas is in right field. And we are ready for baseball as Brennan Anderson steps in. Anderson, the second baseman, a 323 average batting from the right side against Riley Pierce, the left-hander out of Salem Hills High School down in Utah County. First pitch over for a strike. Now the Utes have six freshmen in their starting lineup to, tonight, including Pierce on the mound. And uh, that inexperience, you know, has started to change in favor of the Utes as they've been able to get some innings under their belt. They had a rough start, but now they're starting to put it together. And BYU's got to hit their stride right here tonight. Oh, one one pitch, slow roller out toward the third baseman. Riker, Tom, he's got it, and he'll throw Anderson out. So the Cougar leadoff hitter grounds out, and that will bring Jarrett Perns to the plate, Cougar center fielder. Jarrett, uh, fantastic year, 359 average, a home run, 12 RBIs. Jarrett, really one of the surprises of this team, come out, coming out of uh, re- even spring baseball, really wasn't even on the depth chart, but he's come in, gotten an opportunity, and really made the most of it. Yeah, it's one of those guys Coach Littlewood talks about, again, having the opportunity, making the most of it. First pitch to Perns down low, ball one. When we played the Utes uh, just a few weeks ago, Perns was batting ninth, and his hit streak is still intact coming into this game tonight, but now batting in the two slot for the Cougars. Here's the pitch to Perns, and that's outside for a ball. Umpires today in the ball game. Our uh, Darren Hyman behind the plate, Jake under. Ulan Hoop is the uh, first base umpire. Jared uh, Ferrans is at second, and Randy Upton down at third base. 
And here's the 1-1 pitch. Perrin hits the ball right up the middle for a base hit. Solid swing by Jarrett there and Cougars' uh, first hit of the ball game. Great piece of hitting by Perns that time. Had a 2-0 pitch, sitting on a fastball, gets it right out over the plate and just laces that over Pierce's head for a single up the middle to get the Cougars on base. So runner at first base for BYU, and that will bring uh, Schneeman to the plate. Daniel really struggled down at Pepperdine last weekend. Looking to get untracked here against the Utes. Daniel's average has dipped to 262 on the year. Does have a home run and 20 RBIs. As Perns at first base and throw two first and uh, Perns back in safely. Just a little check me move from Pierce right there. The lefty showing not really his best stuff and you wouldn't expect him to show his best move right there. But we'll see if Perns is running and how aggressive BYU will be on the base pass right here with one out in the first inning. Sneeman steps in. Here is the pitch from Riley Pierce, and that's over for a strike. 89 miles an hour on that fastball by uh, Riley Pierce. He's 0-2 on the year. He's only thrown four innings. He's got an ERA of nine. 6'2", 185-pound redshirt freshman, Salem Hills High School product. Beautiful night here in Salt Lake. A little cool, but not too breezy. Makes it uh, fairly comfortable in the ballpark as we start the game here. Cougars won the first contest between these two schools by a score of 7-6. to six. Cougars were in cruise control up 6-2 through eight innings in that game in Provo, Scott, and the Cougars kind of imploded there in the ninth. Yeah, they just kept, you know, it was, it was a situation where he had a, a couple guys hit by pitches and then a walk and then a base hit and then a swinging bunt, and then, you know, next thing you know, it was a tie ball game, but BYU getting the W. There's a ball head out toward the shortstop. Richardson's got it on to second for one. The return to first in time for the double play, 6-4-3. And the Utes retire the Cougars here in the first. No runs, one hit, no errors, nobody left. We are through a half an inning. Cougars nothing. And the Utes come into the plate on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. Go to the bottom of the first inning. The Cougars with a base hit in the top half. But we're retired on the double play ground ball off the bat of uh, Daniel Sneeman. And the Utes are coming to the plate here in the bottom of the first. Deshaun Kersey, the DH, will lead it off. He'll be followed by Riker, Tom, and then Oliver Dunn, the second baseman. Uh, Kersey's been hot. He's been swinging it really well as of late. Uh, Hit well against Oregon State. Again, Utah taking two out of three from the Beavers who came into that series against Utah, ranked the top team in the country. So that's a huge momentum boost for Utah. But Burrup right now trying to send a message here at the bottom of the first. Deshaun Kiersey, an excellent ball player. And the first pitch is over for a call. Strike one, 84 mile an hour on the fastball there from Burrup. Uh, Kiersey battling a little bit of a hamstring problem. That's why he's dh If you remember a couple of weeks ago, he didn't even play against the Cougars. Right. Swing and fouled straight back. And the count now, one ball and one strike. Took a little off that. See what Burrup does right here against Kiersey. Pretty sparse crowd in the ballpark so far. Hopefully it'll fill in as the evening goes on. And here is Burrup's 0-2. Way outside, all the way back to the screen for ball one. Cougars with Hill behind the plate. Brian Sue at first. Brendan Anderson at second. Schneeman at short. And Nate Favero at third. Kyle Dean in left. Jarrett Perns in center. Brock Hale in right field. Cougars 14 and 12 coming in. Utes 6 and 20 coming in. That pitch another curveball well outside for ball two. Trying to stay away. They've got a scouting report on Kiersey and have definitely stayed off speed with him. On a slider right there that missed outside. kiersey has been a starter since he walked onto campus. He's now a junior. Pitch just off the plate, three and two. Utes uh, have uh, been playing pretty good baseball. They are hitting 267 as a team, up about 30 points from when the Cougars saw them last. 3 2 pitch, fouled straight back. Nice pitch by Burr up right there saying, you know what? No outs. Throw the fastball over. Let him swing it. 
You got guys behind you that are playing well defensively. See if he comes with another fastball right here on the full count. Again, 3-2. Here's the lefty's pitch, and that ball again fouled, this time down the first base side. And Kiersey doing exactly what you want your leadoff guy to do. He's fouled off four pitches now, getting a good chance for everyone in the dugout on deck to see Burr up a little bit more, see how he's going to attack the Utes today. Again, Burrup with the 3-2 offering. Ball fouled up again right up here near the press box area. He almost had that, Brent. That was, that yeah, was pretty I was, close. I was ready. I saw you were kind of shying away. I was, coming, <laughs> I, was, I was trying to protect you, man. Again, 3-2 and two the count. As Bo Burrup, 6'5", 225 left-hander. This is ball hit out toward Anderson, but through the hole into right field. And Deshaun Kiersey... Leads off the game for the Utes with a solid single. Not a bad pitch right there by Burrup. Came inside again with the fastball, but that time Kiersey again. You know, when a guy fouls that many off and gets that many swings, uh, chances are he's going to put a good swing on one. And and that's exactly what he did. Just a foot or two beyond the glove of, of Anderson there to be able to get that. So a leadoff single for the Utes here in the bottom of the first. Riker Tom steps in. He is a redshirt freshman. Very young team the Utes uh, putting on the field here tonight. As we mentioned, six. I mean, six. I, I can't remember a lineup that BYU has faced in uh, recent memory where they've, they've got six freshmen yeah. starting on And most the of team. these kids are redshirt freshmen. Yeah. Bill Kennerberg, looking ahead, decided to sit them out last year, had a, had a decent team, and... Uh, you know, redshirting kids anymore is pretty tough. There's a ball hit down to Favero on to second for one. The return to first in time for the double play. 5-4-3, good play there by Favero. And the Cougars turn two. It looked like Favero at, at first, I mean, it was such, he's already in on the grass on that ground ball. So he had enough time and looked like he just had a, a little trouble getting it out of the glove yeah. but made a perfect throw. And that time Anderson was able to just turn that quickly for the double play. Big pitch by Burrup right there. Oliver Dunn now, second baseman, left-hander steps in. First pitch, line drive, base hit. Oliver Dunn, again, has been swinging a real hot bat for the Utes. And he singles with two men out. That'll bring uh, Braden Benedictus. Uh, we saw this kid in the Utah game in Provo, came in as a first baseman, I think got injured. They put Benedictus in, and this kid turned two or three Fabulous defensive plays for the Utes. Yeah, the left fielder had run into the wall, and so they bring Benedictus in, and he made three big league plays at first base that kept the Utes really in that game and extended it to extra innings. Benedictus, another one of those redshirt freshmen out of Taylorsville High School, throw to first base and uh, back in safely is done. Dunn leads the Utes with five stolen bases on the year. He's been thrown out once. Well, Coach Kinneberg is notorious for, you know, knowing how to grow his team and turn young talent you know, throughout the course of their time in college, and it's exactly what he's trying to do right here. He's got, again, you can't look at the record. We, we talked about this earlier when they came in to, to BYU a few weeks ago. They'd only won a couple games. Now they're 6-20 and 20 on the year, but they're 3-3 three and three in the Pac-12, and so you can't just look at that overall season record and, think it's going to be a walk in the park well they lost their first 13 this year there's a fly ball foul down the right field line since then they're playing about 500 baseball against good competition uh, you know pack 12 type uh, teams absolutely and those first 13 you mentioned that they lost 10 of those 13 games were by two runs or less and and perhaps coach kinderberg realizes that's where the inexperience perhaps some of these guys who again haven't pitched that much that's the difference, and now we're starting to see that even out as they get a little bit more experience under their belt so far this season. And that showed against uh, Oregon State over the weekend, taking two out of the three games against the Beavers. I don't think anybody saw that coming. Oh. Talked to uh, a couple of their people, and they were they were shocked as anybody. Not, not anybody on the team, but just around the team. Sure. Here's the 0-1 pitch to uh, Benedictus from Bo Burrup. And that's outside for a ball. The Utes will uh, travel to Cal this weekend. 
Cougars will be home against Santa Clara Thursday, Friday, Saturday. In Provo, Larry Miller Field. Cougars will play Cal a little later this year down at Cal as they will play on May 1st. That's a Tuesday night game. Here's the 1-1. Ball hit down toward Favero. Up and off of his glove. The runner will hold at second base. We'll see if they go hit or air there. It was a tough play for Favero, but it's it's one he normally makes. Yeah, he does. He's got a great glove at third base. That one just kind of hopped up on him. I'm sure that uh, playing on turf where you get a pretty good hop every time, you know, now you're on the real dirt. You're on the real yeah. stuff out here. Just hopped up and just missed that backhand. It would have been a tough play at second because with two outs, he was moving on contact on that one. And uh, it would have been a long throw to first, but we've seen Favero do that time and time again. Fortunately, still two outs for Burrup right here. De La Forest steps in, and they are going to go base hit there. And the first pitch inside ball one. So the Utes with three hits in the inning. They have runners at first and second base. We, we call that home field scoring, wouldn't yeah, you think? I think so. <laughs> As Burrup with a 1-0 count, two men out, two men on. And De La Forest, another one of those redshirt freshmen, hits a ball to right field. Brock Hale is there. He's under it, and he'll make the catch for the out. And the Utes are retired here in the first. No runs, three hits, no errors, two runners left. We're through one complete, no score. Utah and BYU on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. BYU Baseball is brought to you by Lube Duck. Quick oil change, emissions, and inspections. Now let's take you out to the ballpark with Brent Norton. Brian Sue will lead it off. We go to the second inning. No score. Utes and Cougars. Four hits in the first inning. One by the Cougars, three by the Utes. We've also seen a couple of double plays. Ground balls as uh, Sue will step back. Uh, First time we've seen Sue in the cleanup spot this year. Normally he's been number two. Last week they moved him down to six because he's kind of an RBI guy, and today they've got him in uh, the number four hole, and that ball's hit out toward the center fielder. De La Forest, and he makes the play for out number one. Pretty good swing on that by Sue. Just happened to hit it right out there to the center fielder. Didn't have to move too much. There is a breeze. I mean, you can see the flags. Up, and we can't feel it here, but it is definitely blowing out to right field. Yep. And uh, that's kind of a jet stream here at Smith Ballpark. Brock Hale steps in. Riley Pierce, the lefty, is set. And here's the pitch. And Hale hits this ball deep into the hole at short. Shortstop Richardson's got it. He'll throw to first. Just got him. Hale really hustling down the the baseline. But uh, Richardson with just enough on that throw to get Hale two men out. And that will bring uh, Kringlin to the plate. Pierce working fast. Getting ahead of guys and BYU not showing a lot of patience at the plate right now. Swinging at a lot of the first and second pitches that they've seen so far. But Pierce has been pounding the zone pretty good. Kringlin steps in, right-handed hitter, junior out of Cedar City. And the first pitch up high, ball one. Now, Riley Pierce, when you look at his stat line, uh, not all that impressive. Got the highest ERA on the team. No wins, two losses, three appearances. He has started two games for the Utes, but has been knocked out of the box pretty early. That pitch is outside for a ball. Pierce, in four innings of uh, work, does not have a strikeout, has walked three, given up seven hits and five runs. As Kringlin steps back in, here's the 2-0 pitch from Pierce. Kringlin fouls up, went up and off the catcher's shoulder. He had a good hack at that, though. Fastball right down the middle. Took a good swing at it, just missed that. Pierce, as you mentioned, he's only got a couple appearances so far this year, and you can't get caught up in the numbers, you know, this early in the season. But uh, so far been hitting that 87 to 89 miles an hour for a lefty. He's working from the right side of the rubber. Let's see what Kringlin gets right here. Two balls and a strike. Here's Keaton stepping back in and he fouls 
A pitch off up in the seats down the first base side. Pretty good steady diet of fastballs so far from Pierce. You'd think with the lefty up there in this uh, Cougar, a lot of righties in this lineup. Guys that can really swing the bat. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. And Kringlin steps in. Here's the pitch. Strike three called on the inside corner. Great pitch. Kringlin goes down on strikes. The Cougars, no runs, hits, or errors. We're through one and a half. No score, Utah and BYU on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. The Utes will come up here in the bottom of the second inning. First pitch from Bo Burrup to Wade Golden is over for a strike. Uh, Golden, a 213 average. This is one of the real veterans. He's had a good career for the Utes, but has struggled here so far his senior year. He's out of Redding, California, left-handed hitter. And there's a ball hit right at Brennan Anderson. He'll glove it and throw him out. One man out for the Utes here in the second, and uh, Shea Kramer, the catcher, will step in. That takes so much pressure off of the pitcher, getting that first out especially with an inning like Pierce just had where he sat the Cougars down in order with the strike out there looking on Kringlin. So Burrup trying to match Pierce pitch for pitch. Needs an easy inning. He threw a lot of pitches in the first. As Kramer steps in, here's uh, Burrup's pitch. That's a little bit off the plate. In uh, action yesterday in the conference, uh, Sacramento State beat St. Mary's uh, 10 to 4. That was played at Sac State. Stanford beat Gonzaga 4 to 2. There's another ground ball right at Anderson. Brennan loves it and he throws him out. Quickly, two men down here in the second inning for the Utes. In uh, today's action, uh, Cal State Northridge is leading Pepperdine 8 to 4. That game in the fifth inning played at Pepperdine. And Sac State, St. Mary's playing another one. That's a 1 1 in the top of the third. And that's being played at St. Mary's. So they played at Sac State yesterday, St. Mary's today. Eric Nicolese steps in. First pitch a little bit inside, ball one. I was impressed with this kid in Provo. He hit the ball well. Yeah, Miguel has played very well down in Provo. Burrup right now trying to capitalize on two quick outs, both to Anderson. Pitches outside, 2-0. and oh. Two balls and a strike to the right fielder for the Utes, and there's a fastball over for a strike. Working that outside corner again, Miguel is a left-handed hitter. Burrup working from right there on the The left left side side of that rubber, rubber coming across, giving a little bit more of an angle to work, and he just pounded that outside corner again for the second strike. Two and two the count. And here is Burrup's pitch. Ball fouled up and out of play over the roof here. These two teams will play two more times, April 24th in Provo, May 8th back here in Salt Lake. They've been playing each other three times a year over the last few years, but uh, they added that fourth game this year. Pitch is outside. You know, they added that fourth game to kind of help both each other's RPIs. Sure. And they dropped a game with UVU, but it's it's turned out to be just the opposite as UVU has a higher RPI <laughs> this year than Utah. So you just never know. That's right. You try to schedule you, you your way around it. You try to do the best you, you just, can. Yeah. Yep. 3-2 pitch, ball fouled down the first base side. Well, good job by Burrup. He'd thrown four consecutive pitches on the outside corner. That time tried to come inside. Miguelis just fouled it, pulled it down the right, right baseline. We'll see where he goes right here on a full count, two-out pitch. 3-2, fly ball, center field, easy play for Jarrett. Perns, he goes back a couple of steps, makes the play for the out, and the Utes are retired in order here in the second. No score through two on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. Back here at Smith Ballpark, Brent Norton apologized for that little technical hiccup we had there, but uh, back on the air, the Cougars, while we were away, the Cougars scored a run 
in the top half, the third inning. They lead one to nothing. There's a line drive base hit into right field. Brock Hill over and will hold the uh, runner, Deshaun Kiersey, or uh, Matt Richardson, the shortstop, to a single. Cougars scored that run in the uh, top of the third. As Pavero and Dean were retired, the Noah Hill single. Brendan Anderson with a walk. Jarrett Perns with an RBI single. And then uh, Daniel Sneeman grounded out to the uh, second baseman. So the Cougars up 1-0. Cougars three hits, Utes four hits. And now the top of the order for the Utes coming up, and that's uh, Deshaun Kiersey. He singled his first time up. Again, we do apologize for uh, missing that half inning. That uh, happens uh, when you're dealing with the world of uh, radio. And that ball got away from Noah Hill, and the runner advances to second base. Boy. Noah Hill just let it dribble out of his glove, and that's a big 90 feet for the Utes. Yeah, that one uh, looked like it just, I mean, almost as if he didn't expect Richardson to go on that one, but Richardson still had his secondary lead, just, you know, went about three or four feet behind him between his legs, and by the time he picked it up, Richardson was already at second base. Yeah, good heads-up running by uh, Matt Richardson on the pass ball out of the mitt of uh, Noah Hill. And now Kiersey up there with a chance to tie it up with a base hit. Popped up down the third baseline. Sneeman going out. Dean coming in. That ball will land in foul territory down near the uh, Utah bullpen. That was close. That was close to being right inside the left field line, and nobody could get to that one. Sneeman was trying to get there. Nobody could get close enough to make a play on it as it landed just right, as you mentioned, off the edge of the bullpen. Yeah, really the only flaw in this ballpark are those bullpens. They're just down... The lines, the first and third base lines, are in play. They are in play. Very, very tough. Mm-hmm. Really a kind of a hitter's ballpark, not a whole lot of foul ball territory. It's great for the fans because you're right yeah. there. You guys are warming up, and uh, it kind of gives you the feel of the ballpark. But it, it does come into into play for the, the guys who are trying to track down those foul balls. One ball, one strike. That pitch is just off the plate for ball two. Cal State Northridge did beat Pepperdine 10-4 to today. St. Mary's and Sacramento State are all tied 2-2 in the seventh. And uh, as we mentioned, uh, Washington State leading Gonzaga 2-1. Interesting, Gonzaga playing two midweek games this week on a Monday and a Tuesday. That pitch is off the plate for ball three. Just missed that on the outside corner. I think the home plate umpire, Darren Hyman, has proven that he's got a pretty small zone. It does been pretty tight so far and sticking with that. Burrow has to adjust. He's been staying away from most of the hitters. And now he's got Kiersey again. He's been one of the hottest hitters for the Utes and a guy in scoring position. Here is Burrup out of the stretch. 3-1 pitch, and that's a pie ball four. So a single and a walk, and the Utes with runners at first and second base. Nobody out. Riker Tom coming to the plate. He grounded into a double play his first time up. Well, it's the first trouble that we've seen Burp really get in uh, so far in this game. You know, typically every pitcher has that one inning. If he can get through it, then usually, you know, you'll live to see another inning. But right now with nobody out, runners on first and second, Burp needs... A double play ball here, something his infielders can work with. And Kendall Motes up in the pen for the Cougars, number 41 right-hander, just starting to loosen up right now. There's a play, the second baseman back to the bag, and a quick throw to second, but uh, the runner, Matt Richardson, back in safely. The last inning, Tom hit into the 5-4-3 double play that Favero started. This time, it would be a perfect opportunity if Favero could get this and just touch his bag, go to first, pick up a couple of outs, and help Burrup out. Looks like Favero half expecting a bunt here, and there's the bunt down the third baseline. Burrup with up, and he'll throw to third base in time for the out. Great play by Burrup. Came off the, the mound, and he struggled defensively this year, but not there. Made a good play. Well, and that's the situation. When you have a left-handed pitcher and you're bunting, you want to make that guy go down the first base right. side. Instead, he put that just a few feet to the right of Burrup. All he had to do was field that and step and throw, and Favera was right on the bag. That was a great call 
and Hill telling him that's the catcher's call to tell him where to go, and that was just a no-brainer. That was a great play for BYU to get the first out. One man out, Oliver Dunn steps in, and the first pitch is down low, ball one. Dunn singled his first time up. Utes with four hits, Cougars with three. We are in the bottom of the third inning. Cougars leading this one one to nothing over Utah. Mentioned Cougars return home Thursday, Friday, Saturday against the Santa Clara. Two six o'clock games on Thursday and Friday and one o'clock Saturday. Swing and a miss. Good curveball there by Burrup. As Bo, the uh, sophomore, trying to work his way out of this inning. I'm sure the Coach uh, Littlewood would love to get him through three, maybe four. Yeah, that'd be great. I mean, so far he's pitched pretty well. This is, again, his first inning where he's had a little bit of pressure on him. But that was a great pitch on the outside corner to even up the count. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Curveball over for call, strike two. Went back to that same pitch that he had him swinging on last time. And now you're in a situation as a pitcher where you can have the, the hitter guessing, is he going to come a third time with that slider, that off-speed pitch on the outside corner, or is he going to bust him in on a fastball? Let's see what he does right here with the uh, one-two count. Here's the one-two. Curveball. And they're going to call him out. He reached out with his arm. I think it might have clipped him on the arm back into the catcher's glove. And he is called out by the home plate umpire. That's, you know, that's one of those situations. You rarely see an umpire do this. But he's saying that all of the done at that point did not make an attempt to right. get out of the way. We wondered if Burrup was going to throw another slider. That one came a little bit inside. And, and Dunn just kind of well, stood re- there. Yeah. Well, he kind of reached out with that elbow. And, yeah. you know, the umpire has the right to call him he out. Does. And you don't see it happen that often. But he called him out right there. A very emphatic call. Ben, Bill Kennerberg, head coach out, arguing with the home plate umpire. So a break right there for the Cougars. Two men out. Still two men on. And it would. And I think the other thing is the umpire had called that a strike either way. It hit him, but it also was going to be a strike. So if he's leaning into the zone and not using his bat to try to hit the ball but trying to use his forearm, that's definitely the umpire's discretion. He made the right call. Interesting call. First pitch to uh, Braden Benedictus is inside, or a swing and foul tip. Benedictus singled his first time up down the third baseline. And that's a big out by Burrup as well because – now you still have runners on first and second, but two outs. And for him to come with that pitch at that time, it's a lot of confidence in Littlewood right now and for Burrup himself. Here's the 0-1 Benedictus fly ball. Jared Perns right there in center. He'll make the catch. And Burrup works his way out of a jam here in the third inning. For the Utes, no runs, one hit, no errors. Two runners left on base. We are through three complete. Cougars one, Utes nothing on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. BYU Baseball is brought to you by Lube Duck. Quick oil change, emissions, and inspections. Now let's take you out to the ballpark with Brent Norton. Brian Sue will step in for the Cougars. Uh, Sue flew out to center field his first time. Cougars lead 1-0 as we play the top of the fourth here, Smith Ballpark in uh, Salt Lake City. Brent Norton and Scott Hawes bringing you the action here. Sue hits this ball, second baseman going out. Put gets a glove on it, but can't make the play. That'll be a base hit by Sue. Good effort out there by Dunn, the second baseman, to even knock that ball down. Both second basemen have been getting a lot of action today. Anderson for the Cougs. And that one right there, Sue hit it. Kind of inside out of that one. It was uh, pitch was a little bit inside on the plate, but caught him just enough where he was able to Squeeze it just right in between first and second base. Pick up another hit for Sue. Stays, again, one of the hottest hitters for the Cougars so far this year. Brock Hale steps in now for the Cougars. Uh, Hale uh, grounded out to the shortstop. He's seen one pitch in the game. And grounded out on that pitch as we play the top of the fourth. First pitch to Brock Hale is on the outside corner for a strike. Brock leads the Cougars with seven home runs. Also leads him with 21 RBIs. You look up and down this uh, order, Anderson with 19, RBI Steeman with 20, Sue with 19, Hale with 21. So a lot of guys right there. Yeah, and there's just enough of a breeze here going out that uh, if he gets a hold of one, he's got plenty of power to put it out of Smith's ballpark. Here's the 0-1, that's up high, one ball and one strike. So far, Pierce 
sticking with mostly fastballs. He's only thrown a couple of off-speed pitches so far. Warming up, he showed he's got quite a repertoire, a curveball and a changeup, even a little slider in there. But so far, it's a steady diet of fastballs for the Cougars from the lefty. Mo, yeah, Moats has sat down in the pen, so it looks like we're going to see Burrup out here again in the bottom half of the inning. There's a quick throw, and Sue slides back in head first into the bag safely. The well, last thing, again, BYU getting something they couldn't get at Pepperdine very much, and that's a clutch two-out hit to score the first run. Perns again staying hot, and there's, it's no surprise why he's in the two-hole right now. 17-game hitting streak now for Jarrett Perns as this kid has come in. Boy, you talk about taking advantage of an opportunity and running with it. Jarrett's played an outstanding center field also. Well, back in the UVU game, Coach Littlewood was still trying to decide who the center fielder was going to be. Yeah. Perns McIntyre, gets an op- right. right, and then Perns gets his opportunity. He's been hitting in the nine spot, but then just continued to show that he can hit quality pitching, and now here he is. You know, hitting at the two spot for BYU. Throw and, the first again. And being consistent at it. Not just having a couple of good games, but... Hitting game, close to 400. Game in and game <laughs> out. He's got a home run and just doing it all. And defensively, I mean, he's been, you know, spectacular in center field so far for BYU. Ball and a strike. You talk about spectacular. Brock Hill last week at Pepperdine in game two. Three diving catches in right field. Had four hits. It was outstanding for Hale, outstanding game, and he takes a pitch over for a call strike. And, you know, Scott, you look at the West Coast Conference standings, Cougars 3-6, and six, but only three games out of second place. Look at look at the – everybody is either 4-5 and five or 5-4 five and four this year. It's, yeah. it's unbelievable. Everybody's been beating up on everybody. Yeah. And of the ten teams in the West Coast Conference, only five have winning records so far this year in their overall standings. And so you look at it in San Francisco, yeah, they're out in, in front with an 8-1 and one record in conference, but... That's the biggest shocker of all as the uh, ball popped up foul. That's going to find the seats down the uh, first base side. Yeah, San Francisco right now 8-1, and one, really a shocker. They have played, uh, they played Pacific and they played Portland their first six, but then they took two or three from San Diego this last weekend right. in San Francisco. Cougars will have to go to San Francisco later in the year. St. Mary's 5-4. and four. The Cougars are also will be visiting the Gales there. They've played Gonzaga, Pepperdine, and LMU so far this year. Uh, after this weekend, the Cougars go to Portland to take on the uh, Pilots. So pretty exciting race in the conference. Of course, the top four teams go to the conference tournament. Pitch to Brock Hill is fouled up and over the roof here down the first base side. I mean, all you want to do right now is go into every series saying, let's just win the series. We need two out of three, and just you can't have a sweep like you had against LMU to start off the season, especially on your home field. Those are the ones that you expect to sweep, if not take the series like they did against Gonzaga. So if you can put together three or four series where you're taking two out of three or getting the sweep, you're going to be right there where you want to be you know, three-quarters of the way through the season, and then you play the San Francisco's and some of these others, and every single game you play head-to-head has serious implications. So there's a lot of work to do, but a lot of season left for BYU. As you mentioned, Cougars one of the few teams in the conference with an overall winning record. And so they can kind of take that and uh, build on their confidence and just start playing a little bit better. Pitches, strike three called on the outside corner. And Brock Hale goes down for the first out. And for one of the first pitches that we've seen Pierce throw an off-speed pitch, that was a 78-mile-an-hour changeup that just kind of froze Hale. He hadn't seen anything but fastballs. Pierce picking a great time to throw that off-speed pitch for his first out of the inning. Kringlin steps in. Kringlin uh, struck out looking his first time up. He'll be followed by Favero. One out. A runner on first base. And Keaton Kringlin stepping in. 298 average coming into the game. And the first pitch to Kringlin, that ball is down low in the dirt for ball one. Another off-speed pitch by Pierce. Definitely this time through the lineup is making some adjustments. Uh, you know, a lot of fastballs first time through. He caught Kringlin looking, as you mentioned, on an inside fastball for the strikeout 
back in the second inning, but that time started him off with an off-speed pitch. Mike Littlewood in his sixth year of the head coach of BYU down in the first base coaching box. Trent Pratt, the associate head coach, over on the first base side. And there goes the runner, Sue, that they throw behind him, and Sue is going to be tagged out. Sue running on the pitch looked like uh, first movement and just got caught. Two men out. Yeah, nothing deceptive about Pierce's move. He was just going on first movement, as you mentioned, and Sue was just, you know, really didn't have much he could do other than just try to get to second base. But uh, that time, the Benedictus puts the throw right there on the money. Easy tag for Richardson for the second out. Kringland steps back in. Keaton a swing and a miss. One and one. Keaton a little tardy on that fastball. 87. Keaton, the junior out of Cedar City. Had a couple hits in that middle game, but really struggled in game three at Pepperdine. Just looking for that consistent effort we're used to seeing out of Kringland. And as we have mentioned, been battling that hamstring issue the entire year. That pitch is outside. Two and one. Yeah, you wouldn't think that an injury like that can have an effect on, you know, your focus at the plate and your ability to consistently put good swings together. But Kringlin just, uh, again, hit and miss so far this season. Everybody knows he's going to get going here. It's just a matter of time. 2-1 pitch to Kringlin. That's down low, ball three. Good discipline there on that 2-1 pitch. Both bullpens completely empty at this point as the starters have gone through three plus innings and the Cougars leading this on one to nothing. Jarrett Perns, the RBI single in the last inning, has been the only score. England fouls this one up and out of play. Good cut on another fastball. That one up in the zone. Crinlin just missing that one right there. So now he's got a full count. See if he remembers what Pierce threw him last time when he struck him out on that inside fastball. Three and two. Keaton Kringlin, the Cougar DH, steps back in. Here's the pitch. Kringlin lines one into center field base hit. Two out single for Keaton. And that will bring Favero to the plate. That's one where a pitcher just hates metal bats. (laughs) Because in the big leagues, that's a... That's a broken bat uh, out right there for sure. Kringlin caught that on the inside on the hands. A little bit of good pitch by Pierce on the inside, but Kringlin fighting that off for the base hit. Two men out, Favero steps in. He grounded out to the second baseman, Dunn. His only time up in the game. Wind's been pretty consistent, blowing kind of out toward left center. I think any ball hit up in the air is going to get a little bit of a boost as uh, Favero swings at a pitch up and out of the zone for strike one. Yeah, for sure. This park's notorious for that when you get those. Even though the temperatures are cooler right now, got that breeze pushing out. So far, though, we haven't really seen any well-hit balls, no. though, hitting the warning track or threatening to go out of here. Deep center field here at 420, but that right field line only 315, a little short porch. 345 down the left field line, and Favero takes a fastball over for call strike two. So Nate Favero trying to extend the inning here with uh, two men out. And a Cougar runner at first base. Third baseman steps back in, batting from the left side. And here's the pitch. Favero takes that one. Wild one gets past the catcher. Kringlin around second base. He'll hold right there. Catcher uh, Shea Kramer had a hard time figuring out where that baseball was. Looked like it came up and off of uh, Kramer's shoulder maybe on a short hop and went all the way back to the screen. Yeah, he's lucky that Kringlin didn't try to yeah. get to third on that one. And Kramer had no idea where that ball was. Finally, some of the guys in the dugout yelling, it's over here able to finally dig it out but similar situation that we had last inning with a runner on second and two outs BYU cashed in with that one the base hit by Perns let's see if Favero can do it right here the ball and two strikes to Nate Favero 
And the pitch, Vivero hits the ball pretty well. Center fielder going over in the right center field alley. Makes the catch for the out. And the Cougars are retired. No runs. Two hits. No errors and one man left. We are through three and a half. One nothing. Cougars leading the Utes on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. Davis Delorfus will step in. He flew out to Brock Hill and right first time. Cougars lead 1-0 as we play the bottom of the fourth inning. Delorfus uh, squares the bunt, takes that pitch up a little bit high for ball one. Delorfus, a a redshirt freshman out of Fairfield, California, playing in center field tonight for the Utes. Here's Burrup's 1-0 pitch, and that's up a, a little bit high for ball two. Burrup right now has done a good job for the most part tonight, staying ahead of hitters, falling behind early on Delorfis. See if he can get one back right here. 2-0 pitch, that's over for a strike. And this is a situation for Burrup, who really hasn't pitched you know, too many times. I mean, he's in his fourth inning right now, second time through the lineup. You don't want him to start to get too fine. 2-1 pitch hit right at Schneeman. Daniels got it. And he'll throw him out. It's exactly what you've got to do right there. Just trust in throwing your your pitches, hitting your spots, letting your defense make some plays. And, you know, you always try to teach guys, especially the younger kids in high school or some of the younger guys in college, that would you rather throw three pitches and get out of an inning? Or do you want to try to try, you know, strike the entire yeah. side out and, you know, pitch 12, 15, 18 right. pitches? I'll take the three pitches any day. Wade Golden steps in. He grounded out to Anderson at second base, and the first pitch is over for a strike. Golden and then Kramer for the Utes. Cougars about to hit the Utes 5-4, but they lead one to nothing. Burrup's pitch just off the plate, and the count now one and one. Not only does that help Burrup, but you know having your guys routinely making plays, keeping them active, usually they end up fielding better for you when they're just you know busy at work behind you. 1-1 one, one pitch down low, 2-1. and one. Golden, the only senior in the ball game so far for the Utes. How would that be? One senior in the lineup. That's just unheard of. Here's the 2-1 pitch. There's a line drive left field. In comes Kyle Dean. He's not going to get there. So a one-out single by Golden. And that will bring uh, Shea Kramer to the plate. He grounded out to Anderson. His first time up. Little slicer right there. Not much you can do about that one. Golden just putting it over Schneeman's head. He didn't really have much room to run back on that one and make a play. And obviously, Dean had Dean no just chance. No chance on that one either. So the tying run at first base for the Utes. Kramer steps in. He's hitting 250 on the year. Cougars this weekend will start Jordan Wood on Thursday, Hayden Rogers on Friday, and Blake Inouye on Saturday against the Broncos of Santa Clara. And the first pitch is down the line. Broncos have been one of the surprising teams. Uh, they're 4-5 and five on the year, but 15-10. and 10, They lead the conference with the best record overall. Santa Clara did beat the Utes three times early in the year, but they were all close games four 4-2, 4-3, and 6-5 in 12 innings. Yeah, that's that's Im- impressive. You know, they've done a good job. Oh, ball hit into left field, base hit. Dean picks it up, and he's with runners at first and second base, one man out. Yeah, Kramer took advantage that time because Schneeman was at double play depth. He had to be, so he had shaded over towards the bag for the double play ball. Normally, with nobody on, that's right to Schneeman. Maybe he has to backhand that, make a throw across the field. But in that situation, Kramer comes up with the hit. McGillis steps in now. He's a junior out of Tucson. He flew out to center field his first time up. I need to go back and retract that statement. San Francisco actually has the best overall record in the conference, 18-9. and nine. Well, you mentioned Santa Clara again. They've played a good offseason, Pitches preseason. A little bit outside. And they've done pretty well. And, and, again, you don't want to look at the record and think, okay, they're four and five in conference. I mean, BYU three and six. But, you know, all these teams have the potential and will start to put it together here in the next few weeks as they get more innings under their belt. One ball, no strikes. Aguilas steps back in, and here is Burrup's pitch. 
That's off the plate. Ball two. Cougars have got Motes up again in the pen. Hasn't really started throwing hard yet. He's just kind of out there playing catch. Now he'll uh, get a little more serious. Two balls and no strikes to the number eight hitter in the lineup, the right fielder for the Utes. Pitch is over for a strike, two and one. Good fastball right there, 84 miles an hour from Burrup. Decided to come challenge him. All he needs right here is just a double play ball, ground ball, something he can work with. Burrup gave up three hits in the first, but worked his way out of a jam. And again in the third, worked his way out of a runners at first and second. Nobody out and retired the Utes. And here's the 2-1 pitch. Ball hit very well. Deep right field. Back goes Brock Hale looking up. This ball is out of here. Three-run home run by McGillis, his uh, fourth of the year. RBI's number 9, 10, and 11, and the Utes uh, take a 3-1 lead. Yeah, he put a good swing on that one, and with the wind just blowing out enough to give that ball a little extra lift. I don't know whether it needed the wind at all. Hale kind of Took a few steps and saw that one sail over the right center fence. That's a big hit for the Utes right now with those runners on base. That'll bring up the number nine hitter, Matt Richardson. He singled his only time up. Utes now with seven hits, three here in this inning. And the pitch from Burrup is a little bit outside, ball one. That was Miguelis' fourth home run of the year, which leads the Utes now. Normally, you don't see your number eight hitter being your power hitter in the lineup, but Miguel is showing right there. He's got some pop in that bat. Pitch is over for a strike, one and one. Miguel has, uh, had a good game against BYU in Provo, swung the bat well. Uh, he only came in hitting 232 on the year, but he showed the kind of power he has right there on that swing. There's a fly ball, Brock Hale in right, going back a couple of steps and makes the play for the up. Yeah, boy, the wind caught that one and yep. just about took it over Hale's head. Yeah, it looked like he just had a good track on and then ball kept flying on him, kept pushing him back. He was right on the warning track with that ball. So the wind definitely being a factor. You can see a couple of the flags out there with it pretty good in right field. Two men out top of the order. Deshaun Kersey steps in. Utes have taken a 3-1 to one lead over BYU as Kiersey, who has singled and walked, steps in against Bo Burrup, and the first pitch is outside, ball one. Well, and this is where Coach Littlewood, you know, really wants to see how Burrup responds after giving up that three-run home run. You'd like to see him finish out this inning strong and come back and get, get Kiersey their leadoff out right here. With- Pop up, shallow left, Kyle Dean got a little bit of a late jump on the ball and went over and made the catch for the out. Utes with three runs on three hits. There were no errors, nobody left. We are through four complete. 3-1, Utah leading BYU on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. What's up, Cougar Nation? This is uh, Keaton Kringlin, outfielder on the BYU baseball team, and you are listening to the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Go Cougars. Go to the fifth. Kyle Dean will lead it off for BYU. Kyle popped up to the infield his first time up there. Kyle Dean, a 219 hitter coming into the ball game. And the first pitch outside. You know, I talked to Coach Littlewood a little on the pregame about Kyle. And this is a kid that literally can carry your team and has in the past, but just haven't seen it happen yet this year. He yeah. is a soft, red shirt sophomore, has battled injuries throughout his career. But boy, it'd be big for the Cougars to have Kyle step up and really start uh, driving the ball. Yeah, this is the time where you need these guys to start stepping up. And, you know, as a coach, you can only give these guys a a leash that's so long. And and if they're not producing, you've got to make some adjustments. That's why you see guys like Perns who have stepped up and moving their way up the batting order. Dean swings and misses one and two the count. Kyle, uh, 33 at-bats, 11 strikeouts this year. So about every third time up. Well, he took a good hack at that 86 mile an hour fastball from Pierce, which is really where he's been most of the game. Hasn't shown much off speed yet to Dean. Here's the one two to Dean. Fouls this one off. 
On deck is uh, Noah Hill, and then the top of the order in Brennan Anderson. Cougars have only left one man on base in the ball game. Five base hits. They've kind of spread those around. That's what they're, kind of their trouble's been. They just haven't been able to consistently get the back-to-back base hits. Yeah, that's been a big problem so far this year. You know, they had plenty of hits in the second game against Pepperdine. One-two pitch down, low ball two. Yeah, 20 base hits in that ballpark is saying something. <laughs> that is a pitcher's ballpark if there ever was one. And for the Cougars to bang out 20 base hits, I, I, I don't know if I w- would have ever believed it. Well, they were a little frustrated after that first game, not getting any runs across to help out and support Wood. 2-2 two, two pitch, Dean fouls another one off. Boy, what a great outing for Riley Pierce. He'd only thrown four innings the whole year. He's gone four here tonight, just giving up one run on five hits. So a real bonus for Kennerberg and uh, the Utah team. Well, and this is a confidence builder for him as well. I mean, he's a good left-handed pitcher. Same time, Cougars have to be looking at the fact that this is his longest outing. He's got to be fatiguing a little bit, you'd think. And so BYU needs to take advantage, get something on the board right here. Kind of answer back. 2-2 pitch. Dean fouls another one off. Up in the crowd and bounces down from the third level down to the first level. Some guy lands right on his lap. Didn't even know it was coming. (laughs) (laughs) Got a big smile on his face. Didn't think it would come back. A little late late Easter uh, present for him right there. It's one thing coming back two levels, but coming back all three. Bouncing around the, the mainly empty seats here. 2-2 2-2 to Dean. That pitch is down low, ball three. Boy, Dean really battling up there. Good at bat. Chances are with Dean, you know, hitting in the eighth spot right here, Pierce is going to come with a fastball. So Dean should be able to get a good swing on this. If he puts it somewhere in the zone, he's not going to want to lead off walk. Should be able to come to him. 3-2 ball hit very high. But in the ballpark, uh, center fielder going back on the track. Makes the catch. Well, Kyle Dean hit that ball about 410 feet. And the center fielder, Delorifus, uh, went back, kept going back into that wind. And the ball finally came down. Boy, Dean, if he hadn't hit that ball so high, it would have been well out of here. I'll tell you what. I mean, we knew if he could get it up in the jet stream with with the wind just blowing out enough to help these balls, like we saw in the last inning with Miguel's home run. That one just kept pushing the center fielder back and back and finally catches it right up against the wall. But I think Kinneberg may say, you know what? That was close enough. We're going we're gonna to call it a night yep. for Pierce. That's it for Pierce. We'll take a two-minute break. Be back with more Cougar baseball action on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. Josh Lopion, another left-hander into the game. He's a senior. 6'4", 200-pounder out of uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He's really been one of the stalwarts on this staff, but this is senior year. He has struggled mightily as he's got an ERA over nine. Lapiana, no wins, two losses. He's thrown 14 innings, given up 26 hits. Opponents hitting uh, 413 off the left-hander. And Noah Hill will step in. Hill won for one in the day. He scored the only Cougar run. And here is Lapiana's first pitch to Noah Hill, and it's down low, ball one. Yeah, Coach Kinneberg would love to get Lapiana going again as they head into the heart of their conference play. Again, somebody like him, a senior who pitched so well last year, just hasn't found the groove yet. 1 0 pitch, that ball's popped up down the first base side. Ball is going to land about just a row in. Right fielder came in, couldn't quite get there. There's that bullpen, just right over the bullpen where BYU's pitchers and catchers are sitting down there. Landed about two feet behind him, and they weren't going to move. I mean, they weren't going to get out of the way. No, you're not going to help them. You're not going to do that. (laughs) Especially in a rivalry game, right? There's there's no no way anybody's budging for that one. You know, everybody's in play now. I mean, that's that's the bad thing about those (laughs) bullpens. Maybe maybe it makes it exciting. I'm not sure, but uh, they haven't figured out where to put the bullpens in this ballpark to keep them out of play. So two balls and a strike to Noah Hill. One man out here in the fifth. Cougars now behind 3-1. to one. 
Miguel is his three-run home run in the bottom of the fourth. And Noah Hills fouls this one down the third base side. Two balls, two strikes to count. You know, you look back and you wonder if maybe Burrup went one inning too long, but, you know, hindsight as a coach, you know, coulda, shoulda, woulda. Burrup seemed to be throwing well and gave up a couple of those hits. And then Just Miguelis, no. their number eight guy, pops one out yeah, of here. That one pitch was the difference. 2-2 two, two to Hill. That's inside for ball three. Lapiana this year, uh, eight strikeouts, seven walks in those 14 innings. He has given up one home run this year. And here's the lefty's pitch. Little looper right field base hit. Noah Hill, two hits in the ball game. He's two for two. And that will bring uh, Brennan Anderson to the plate. Great piece of hitting by Hill right there. Lapiani knew with a full count he was going to come with something somewhere over the middle of the plate. Just put his bat on it. Didn't try to do too much with it. Didn't try to swing too hard. Just get himself on base. Now you've got the tying run at the plate. Let's see what uh, the top of the lineup can do for the Cougars here. Cougars have had uh, Moats and Parkinson up, but now they've got Sudruth up, the big right-hander. He's really heating it up. Looks like he's going to come on, possibly, and pitch the uh, fifth inning as that ball is a grounded foul down the third baseline by Anderson. As Sedrath is the only one down there throwing. One man out, one man on for the Cougars as they're down by two runs. To the Utes here in the top of the fifth. And here's the 0-1 to Brendan Anderson. That's way outside for a ball, 1-1. One and one. I remember Lapiana came in with one out after that deep fly ball that Dean hit to the wall off of Pierce. But Lapiana, again, here, here's your senior, right? You, you expect this guy to come in and shut, shut these guys down, but his confidence is really weak right now. And if Anderson can get a hit right here, Here's the 1-1 one, one to Brennan. That's way outside ball two. Yeah, this would put Lapiana in another situation where he already knows he's on thin ice. He hasn't pitched well. You know, people have been hitting again. You mentioned over 400 opponents have been hitting against Lapiana so far this year. So if Anderson can get on base somehow right here, maybe first and third with one out, put the pressure on Lapiana. Quick throw to first base and the runner back in safely, Noah Hill. I wouldn't be surprised if Anderson, you've got the third baseman playing about eight feet behind the bag right now. This is a perfect situation to drop one down if he wanted to pick up another little base hit. Two balls and a strike. Pitch to Brennan. That ball's fouled up and off the catcher's glove, two and two. So Anderson, who came into the ballgame hitting at 323, is 0 for 1 today. Grounded out in the first. Walked in the third. Steps in, trying to get the Cougars back in this ballgame. And Brennan's got some pop in that bat. He's got good bat speed. He's got uh, two home runs on the year and 19 RBIs. Here is Lapianas, 2-2. That's outside ball three. Whew. Close. Yeah, Lapiana wanted that one. Some of the fans not too happy sitting behind home plate. They thought that caught the outside corner, but Anderson... Pretty good eye right there. Pretty patient. I don't know if I'd be able to hold off on that one with two strikes. The guy on first base. Three and two. Lapiana. Here's the pitch. Anderson fouls it off. Right back up over the top of the roof here at uh, Smith Ballpark. The B's open here on Thursday against uh, Albuquerque. That's right. Taylor Cole, former Cougar, uh, has been is on the roster for the Bees this year. He was with Toronto last year, pitched a little bit in the majors, and now at AAA for the Angels. 3-2 pitch. That's outside ball four. That's a great at bat by Anderson, drawing a walk. And again, we talked about La Piana. You know, he threw really well last year for the Utes. He struggled so far, and now to come in and give up a hit and a walk. 
This is an opportunity for Perns, who has just been red hot for BYU, to tack on another RBI. He's already got one tonight. Jarrett two for two on the day as he steps in. Now we've got a ball, looked like came out of the uh, Cougar bullpen area. Sudrath uh, down there, threw one uh, wildly past the, the bullpen catcher. Can't tell who that is. The Cougars have those anthracite jerseys on, very tough to see numbers. <laughs> yeah. They're black numbers on really dark charcoal blue jerseys and very, very tough to pick up. Curveball, that one drops in for a strike. Perns down in the count 0-1. A good pitch right there by La Piana. Off speed, outside corner, kind of back door right there on Perns. Utes have a right-hander up in the pen beginning to throw. That's uh, number 30, Austin Moore. And here is Lapiana's 0-1. Perns fouls this one off. And they count to 0 2. Perns came out of College of Southern Nevada down in uh, Henderson. Pretty much a walk on for BYU. C- had some offers, but wanted to play at BYU and taking full advantage of uh, after he'd been given the opportunity. And hottest Cougar hitter right now. Absolutely. He's got the speed defensively. He's got a good glove out there. And now he's showing what he can do at the plate. He's 0 2 right, right now against La Piana. Runner in scoring position, though. Pitch to Perns, a swing and a miss. Looked like maybe a pitch off the plate. Perns went after it. And big strikeout there by LaPiana. Yeah, LaPiana, that one was tailing away from Perns. Not much you could do about that one. He was down 0-2. That brings Sneeman up. Uh, Daniel is uh, 0 for 2. Grounded into a double play in the first. Grounded out to the second baseman in the fourth inning. And Sneeman, the lefty against uh, Lapiana, the left-hander for the Utes. He's taking a long time. Apparently some miscommunication from Kramer and Lapiana right there. The runner on second. Want to make sure they get their signs correct. You don't want to pass ball right here. Kramer's... Had some problem, at least he did in the last game against BYU. Quite a few pass balls. Been better tonight. Much better. First pitch to Sneeman. That bunch is a curveball down low. 1-0 the count on the Cougars shortstop. Cougars home this weekend, 6 o'clock Thursday, 6 o'clock Friday, and 1 o'clock Saturday. Larry Miller Field, uh, I think we're supposed to have some pretty good weather, so it should be a good weekend of baseball. Should be really nice. If you haven't picked them up, pick up your tickets and come out. And enjoy the great ballpark. The 1-0 pitch is outside a fastball. Right now we're just in that twilight inning or two where the the artificial lights aren't helping much, but the, the daylight's pretty much going going gone and so it's kind of hard to pick that ball up we saw in the last inning dean in left field that fly ball had a tough time picking it up hopefully the hitters aren't having a difficult time little fake pickoff move right there from la piana you know the lights are on and these lights are fantastic first time i saw these lights were at stanford last year they're they've kind of got hoods over them so as you drive by the ballpark, you can't even can't tell there's it. lights on. Yeah. But they do a great job. They're LED of illuminating the field. Also saw them at Auburn this year. And they are just uh, absolutely unbelievable lights. Uh, and if a neighborhood worries about lights in the ballpark, these are the these are the ones that you don't have to really worry about because it just illuminates the field, and that's basically it. Sneeman fouls one off. I was going to say, look how shallow that left fielder is playing. You know, Sneeman's got good power the opposite way. And left fielder Wade Golden is a good 60 feet from the warning track out there and left. Yeah, they've got Schneeman playing him to pull a little bit. Center fielder's playing him straight up, but definitely not deep, especially with two outs. You can't let a ball get over your head or in the gap. We'll see if Schneeman can do just that. Here's the 2-1 to Daniel. Fastball on the Ooh. outside corner, 2-2 two and two the count. That's a corner that's uh, not been there. 
for Burrup most of the night when he was pitching. So two balls, two strikes to Daniel Sneeman. Sudworth continuing to throw for the Cougars, so he's got to be coming in in the bottom half of the inning. Cougars have really struggled in this situation with guys on base, especially last weekend at Pepperdine. And the 2-2 pitch ball fouled straight back. Came back with a fastball. Best fastball so far from La Piana, 89 miles an hour. Schneeman was right on it. Just missed it. Fouled it straight back. Put a good swing on it. We'll see if La Piana tries to go to that outside corner that he got that called strike a couple pitches ago. Schneeman's got to be thinking about that. Two and two the count. Here's the pitch. That oh. pitch hit him. Came in and got him on the chest. Way inside. And you know, you can see Lapiana really struggling with that off-speed pitch. His yeah, command. Not even close on that one. You could see right when that left his hand, Schneeman had no chance of getting out of the way. Now you got bases loaded. Brian Sue, he's probably the guy you want up in this situation. Absolutely. He's one for two today. He has flown to center field and singled. You mentioned this is his first game hitting in the cleanup Clean spot. Right. So this is exactly why Coach Littlewood said, I'm going to put Sue in. we got bases loaded, two outs. One base hit right here, and this game's knotted up. Two men out, and Sue coming up. Here's the pitch. Lapiana's fastball is over for a strike. 90 miles an hour on that one. The first pitcher we've seen tonight to hit 90. Good fastball on the outside corner. Owen won the count. Hill at third. Anderson good speed at second. And Sneeman really good speed at first base. And here is the 0-1 to Brian Sue. No, quick move to second base. No throw made. Shortstop playing very deep and at the shortstop position. It's interesting. I haven't seen many bases loaded fake moves, <laughs> moves to, second base. to second base on that one. With a defender about 40 feet away, yeah. the closest guy. Well, whatever you need to do to kind of throw the hitter off, I guess. Owen won the count to Sue. Ball hammered down the left field line. That is a foul ball. Mm. Just missed it. Boy, it wasn't fouled by much. That might have cleared the bases for the Cougars. Absolutely. The count now 0-2 on Sue. Looked like a hanging curveball, and Sue just jumped on it. Just pulled it foul. Those guys have two outs. They're running on contact. And there's no doubt that Schneeman would have been wheeling around, at least getting to third base on that. That stayed fair. But now he's in the hole 0-2. And La Piana, who's shown a tendency so far in this inning, which has been a long inning. Remember, he came in with one out. He's thrown a lot of pitches. He's thrown a lot of pitches, and sometimes he doesn't know where they're going, which can work to your advantage. 0-2 oh, to uh, Sue is down low. One ball and two strikes. Oh, the fans wanted that outside pitch. La Piana wanted that outside pitch, but great job by Sue. Just a little too far outside. Now he's got another chance right here. Tie up the game with a base hit. Ball and two strikes. Loppy on a long look in at his catcher, Shea Kramer. He's got the sign. One, two, two. Ball foul at the plate by Sue. Just got a piece of it. Fouled it up and off the catcher. And the count will remain one ball and two strikes. Well, the Utes with three in the bottom of the fourth inning. Cougars trying to answer here in the top of the fifth as Utah leads this one 3-1. Thirteen base hits in the games. Seven by the Utes, six by the Cougars. Sue's been Mr. Clutch so far this year for BYU, which is exactly what they needed last weekend against Pepperdine, and they need it right here, right now. 1-2, 1-2, Brian Sue fouls it up and up, out of play. Sue came into the game hitting at 367, 
Four home runs, 19 RBIs. Also four steals on the year. And an excellent defensive first baseman. The other thing you like to see about Sue right now is he's got the fewest strikeouts so far. One, two pitch. Sue again just got a piece of it, fouled it back. He's a contact guy. You know, he doesn't try to do too much with it. He's not trying to, you know, hit the grand slam, although he's got that power and capability. But he understands the situation on that one. He just needs to get enough of it to foul it off, live to see another pitch. 92 at-bats for Sue, seven strikeouts. Uh, a month into the year, he's number two in the nation in a few strikeouts per at-bats. Still uh, right there. Here's the one-two to Brian Sue. That ball's hit. Base hit into left field. Here comes one run. Anderson's going to score. And Brian Sue, a big two-out RBI single, has tied this one up at 3-3. Three, three. You know, he fouled off pitch after pitch. He was still behind in the count until he got the one that he wanted. And that's the kind of clutch hitting that BYU needs to see game in and game out. You mentioned three or four games this year. Really, BYU has had has out hit their opponent, similar to what we saw last week against Pepperdine, out hitting them, but just not getting them at the right time with runners in scoring position. And Sue coming up right there and tying the game. Big hit. Both teams, three runs, both teams, seven hits. Brock Hale steps in against LaPiana. And the first pitch, that ball's hit. Third baseman's got it. He'll throw to second for the force. And the Cougars are retired in the inning. But not before they scored two runs on two base hits. There were no errors, two runners left. We are through four and a half now, 3-3. Utes and Cougars on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. Well, Bull Burrup back out on the hill for the Cougars as he goes to the bottom of the fifth. First pitch to Riker Tom is over for a strike. Well, maybe Bull Bull will get a little adrenaline rush after those two runs to tie this one up. He's he's back out there. He's back out there, and I think Coach has decided let's get the most we can out of him right here. We're still in this game, obviously. A one pitch, a swing and a miss, 0-2. Good off speed right there to get ahead. Amazing thing, Sudras throwing about three innings out there, and he continues to throw in the bullpen. Usually when you've got a guy in the pen throwing between innings, you know, he's, he's coming in. Well, this is down low one and two. He's throwing enough that you wonder if Sudworth is just getting some work in, maybe some pen work, and he's not coming in the game because you would think, especially after that last inning, giving up the home run, even though it's only a 3-3 ball game, maybe that it was time uh, to make a switch. But Ball fouled at the plate. And the count remains at one ball and two strikes. Burrup's come in, and he had a long time to sit that last inning. Pierce got the first out. Then they switched to La Piana, and then he had to throw 25 pitches at least to get those last two outs. Here's the one-two. Ball hit down to, well, between Favero and Sneeman. Base hit. Right in the sixth hole. And Riker Tom with his first hit of the ball game, and that will bring Oliver Dunn to the plate. He's single and struck out. Dunn out of Cottonwood High School. Played a lot as a freshman for the Utes. Hitting 277. Leads the Utes with uh, 16 RBIs. Single in the first and uh, struck out in the third. And here is Burrup's first pitch to Dunn. He scored the bunt, took the pitch a little bit outside, ball one. And Favero in that time, just in case. Now that you got a 3-3 ball game, runner on first, no outs, you'd expect him to sacrifice him over to second base. One and all the count. Throw to first, and the runner back in safely. We saw Burrup on a couple of bunts not only misplay it, but also have a, a throwing air to first base down in Provo. I'm sure they've worked on that quite a bit. But it's a little bit more difficult for a lefty to field that, that bunt and throw over to first base. 1-0 pitch inside, ball two. Utes are trying to get their own field 
built uh, up on campus, and they've, uh, they announced it. I think they still need to buy some property. And I've heard the biggest problem is getting the, the correct zoning. The neighbors are not happy <laughs> about the field. And it's, it's going to be kind of a small uh, dimension ballpark. But they really do need to get their own ballpark. This is nice, but, but uh, you know, the bees are here. They're treated, uh, um, uh, I was going to say, like second-class citizens because they are. I mean, you know, if there's a rainstorm a forecast, yeah. you know, they'll say, hey, you better rain it out tonight because, you know, we don't want to tear the field up. Exactly. But it's, it's always tough. And it's also tough from the standpoint that it's such a big stadium even though we've yeah. got, you know, an okay crowd tonight, it doesn't hardly look like anyone's here, even though you've got several hundred in attendance. Seats 13,000. Exactly. It would be nice to have a nice little home bit field. of a home field yeah, advantage. absolutely. You'd love to have that. Place you can call your own, you practice, you, you work out. And I'm not even sure where this team works out. Well, they've got the practice field up there next to the Stein Erickson, or the Steiner Aquatic Center and right across from the indoor practice facility. They've got a you know a practice field, but not enough space there to put in stands and do what you really need to do to make it a sufficient home home park. Two balls and a strike ball hit out to Schneeman at second. He'll step on the bag, throw to first, double play. No. Sue has pulled off the bag. He tried to make the swipe tag and just missed Dunn. So Dunn. The runner was moving, and Schneeman, the ball was hit right up the middle. Schneeman, fortunately, right there. Yeah, he was right behind the bag, so all he had to do was step on the bag and throw. It looked like he may have just rushed it a little bit, um, but, you know, he did the best he could, and what an effort by Sue to come off the bag and catch that and try for the swipe tag. Just missed him. Well, the important thing, the Cougars got the lead runner there as Benedictus steps, and he's singled and flown out. And Burrup uh, will throw to first, runner back in. Oliver Dunn again, the leading new base dealer with five on the year at first base now. He's tied for seventh in the Pac-12 with those five steals. And here is the first pitch to Benedictus. No, Burrup uh, steps off the mound and Fakes like he's going to throw to first and then uh, put the ball back in his glove. It's always the uh, little cat and mouse game with the runner on and a lefty out there. Dunn trying to do his little fake moves as if he's going to go. Here's the pitch. That ball's hit down to Favero. He's got it on to second for one. The No, Anderson unable to make the throw to first. Looked like a pretty good throw by uh, by Favero there, and Brennan just couldn't get it out of his glove. Couldn't I think he get it out. could have turned two there. Yeah. Would have been close at first base, but he's just got to make sure he gets that first one. Great job by Favero with the backhand on the one hopper. Throws a strike right to Anderson at second base for the second out. Good job by Burrup again after the leadoff runner getting on. Now he's got two outs. Needs to go to work right here, pick up one more to get out of this inning. Two men down, uh, Davis De La Forest steps in. He is 0 for 2 today, and he pops it up. Should be an easy play for Jarrett Perns coming in a few steps. He's there and makes the catch, and the Utes are retired here. In the fifth, we're through five now. 3-3 Cougars and Utes on your new skin BYU Sports Network. BYU Baseball is brought to you by Lou Duck. Quick oil change, emissions, and inspections. Now let's take you out to the ballpark with Brent Norton. Keaton Kringlin leads it off for the Cougars. Kringlin one for two on the day, a strikeout in the second, and a single in the fourth. And first pitch from Lapiana's down low, ball one. Lapiana gave up those two runs on a couple of base hits, a walk and a hit batter in that last inning. Yeah, he definitely got uh, his pitches in. 1-0 pitches outside for a ball. More than he would have liked. You know, it's funny. You, you see a guy like Lapiana, so good, so good one year. And then for whatever reason, the wheels come off a little bit. And as a senior, sometimes that happens. You're not drafted. You lose maybe a little bit of your your desire as uh, Kringlin fouls that one over in the Cougar dugout, one-on-one. Or two yeah, and it, it's something where, you know, 
Coach Kinneberg right now wanting to give him some innings and see if he can kind of reestablish himself and and just restart, uh, you know, a little bit into the season. As he mentioned, you know, a little over, what, 15 innings now on the season, but opponents hitting over 400. 2-1 pitch, fly ball. Center fielder went back a couple. Now he's got to come in. De La Forest, and he makes the play for out number one. One man out here in the sixth, and uh, Nate Favero, who's 0 for 2, steps in. Uh, Favero hit it hard the last time, flew out to center field. Wind continuing. It uh, looks like it's abated a little bit, not quite as strong as it was early in the ball game. It's cooling down, though. It is definitely. Fans are starting to put on their jackets, find their beanies, their gloves. This is uh, April baseball in Utah. <laughs> First pitch to Favero's up high, ball one. Even more important for your guys in the bullpen to get extra loose, stay loose in between innings. Takes a little bit longer to get get warmed up. Pitch to Nate, that's down low, ball two. So two balls and no strikes. One man out here in the six. We're all tied up 3-3. Cougars and the Utes here from Smith Ballpark in Salt Lake. Pitch to, that ball's hit out to Benedictus, the first baseman. He shovels the ball to LaPiana for out number two. Good two play. men down and uh, Kyle Dean steps in. And LaPiana got over there just in time for the toss over from Benedictus, two outs, two quick outs, something that La Piana really couldn't do last inning. Struggled. Hit a guy, gave up that clutch hit by Sue to tie the game. Still knotted up at three with two outs. See if BYU can do what they've done twice in this game, and that's find a way to score with two outs. Dean 0 for 2 in the game. Pop up. Last time up, he flew out to deep. Center field, first baseman now on a pop-up over in the Cougar bullpen area, and Benedictus makes the play <laughs> for out number three, and that will do it for the Cougars. They're retired in order here in the sixth. We're all tied up 3-3 through five and a half innings in Smith Ballpark on your new skin BYU Sports Network. Wade Golden will lead it off for the Utes as we go to the bottom of the sixth. There are 3-3 Utes and Cougars. Golden, Kramer, Miguelis, the three hitters. And the first pitch from Bull Burrup is over for a strike. Well, we keep trying to take Burrup out of the game, but Coach Lillwood just keeps running him out there. Boy, you got to give a lot of credit to this kid. He's, he's throwing the ball well. He seems to be getting even better, getting ahead pitch. of guys. Yeah. Swing and a miss, 0-2. Stanford put seven on Santa Clara at Santa Clara in the first inning there. Up 7 to nothing. Irvine leading San Diego 1 0 in the third. Sac State finally ended up beating uh, St. Mary's 4 2. There's a swing and a miss by Golden. He goes down on strikes. One man out. And Shea Kramer, right handed hitter, will step in. We're talking about Burrup, and he just doesn't want to go out of this game. He's thrown well enough to stay in there. And in between innings, you and I were chatting. Uh, my last game against the Utes. 20 some odd years ago was right here in this ballpark and in the second inning it was a 0-0 zero to zero ball game and I left a slider over the heart of the plate against Casey Child who for the youths was our center fielder yeah. with the bases loaded and he hit it over the left center wall for a grand slam and after the inning coach Pollins was like okay Scotty you're done and I looked at coach I was a senior and I said I got more I said you know I made one bad pitch ball popped up 0-2 the count he looked at me and he said you really think it? And I came out, and we shut him out the rest of the way. Unfortunately, we only scored three runs, and we lose <laughs> four to three. But it made me focus. You know, sometimes yeah. that run, that home run that, yeah. that Burrup gave to Miguelis, who's, who's on deck right now, he's been lights out since, uh, really since that home run. 1-1 one, one pitch hit out toward uh, Schneeman. Deep in the hole, Daniel bounces it over to Sue, who makes the play for the out. Great play by Sue. So a two-man out. Well, sometimes it takes something like that to wake you up a little bit. Well, it bit. does, and, it, and that's a situation where, you know, your coach, you know your guys, or you want to give a guy an opportunity. And, and you mentioned, you know, maybe Coach Littlewood 
told him to go back out, or maybe he went to Coach Little and said, I, I got a couple more, Coach, you know. And uh, you like to see guys compete like that. And and so here we are, knotted up at a 3-3 game, and he's gotten two quick outs right here in the bottom and of the sixth. Miguel has a three-run home run his last time up. First pitch outside, ball one. And if you told C- Coach Littlewood's 3-3 and Burrup's still in the game in the sixth, he would have taken that Take all that day. All day long. You've got a big series coming up against Santa Clara. Curveball up a little bit high, oh, uh, 2-0. and oh. What a difference from the last game against the Utes when I think BYU threw six pitchers in that game, pitched by committee. They knew that going in, but tonight Burrup definitely getting a longer leash and showing he's got the potential to be a starter, a fourth starter if needed. 2-0 pitches outside, ball three. So Miguel has flown to center in the second and then the three-run home run in the fourth. Those are the only runs that Borup has given up in the ball game. That pitch is over for a strike, three and one. Bo Burrup, 6'5", 225-pound lefty out of Pocatello, Idaho. He's a junior for BYU. And here's a 3-1 pitch. That's up a little bit high, ball four, so a two-out walk. And that will bring Matt Richardson, the uh, shortstop for the Utes, up. And that was the only grand slam I ever gave up in my career was uh, at this ballpark. So when you asked me to come help out with the broadcast tonight, I had some trepidation because <laughs> my last uh, experience here wasn't oh, we're gonna, the best. We're going to get a new pitcher, Jake Sudroth, <laughs> into the ball game. He'll take over for Burp. Tremendous job by the great, lefty. He did a great job tonight. We'll be back in 60 seconds with the uh, Sudroth and the uh, rest of the bottom of the six here on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. Jake Sudruth into the ball game for the Cougars. Uh, Jake Sudruth this year. This will be his 12th appearance. Two wins, a loss. Has three saves for BYU. 4.11 earned run average. In 15 innings, has 21 strikeouts. Four walks. Opponents hitting 250 off the, the right-hander. He is a transfer from Mesa Community College. and He is uh, a, a sophomore, so he, he was a qualifier, so he was able to transfer out of J.C. out of a freshman year. Right. And he's got dynamic stuff. He does. And Big he's kid. Great control. Again, you mentioned the 21 strikeouts with only four walks. Comes in with a guy on first, but two outs, fortunately, just trying to get out of this inning and then see if BYU can tack on a couple of runs here at the top of the seventh. But Matt Richardson, the uh, shortstop in. He's one for two on the day, singled his first time up. And there's a pitch from Sudruth, and that you see that sharp breaking slider on the outside corner for strike one. Yeah, rest assured the Utes have not seen many guys so far this year with the arm angle and the action that Sudruth has. Oh and one the count, Sudruth from the stretch. And the pitch, and that's way outside for a ball. And the lights just starting to take effect, and how cool do those lights look? They do. I mean, again, you mentioned. <laughs> Have you ever seen them before? Well, and, and you know, looking from just where I live on the, yeah. over there, you, you can always tell when there's a bees game, right, because the lights are shiny. But, I mean. You these, have to look the now and see. These, I'm not sure you can tell. These new lights are really, they've got those those hoods on them. And the Here's field, the 1-1 pitch outside ball two. If you look just beyond the home run fence, it's it's dark behind yeah. that. So, I mean, it really puts a spotlight. It's kind of like the old Lakers in the forum when they, the court was lit up. And that was it. Yeah. The crowd was a little bit darker. I mean, it's. It's a real difference. Two balls and a strike. Cougars will visit Stanford again this year as they'll play three Pac-12 opponents on Tuesday contests. All on the road, Arizona, Stanford, and Cal. Pitches outside, ball three. Three and one, the count to Richardson, and uh, Kiersey's on deck. Yeah, Sudruth has to be careful here. You come in with two outs, and you kind of think, okay, I just need one out, but with a walk here, and then you've got Kiersey, one of the hottest hitters for the Utes, on deck. You don't want to put the go-ahead run on second base. 3-1 pitch, swing and a miss, 3-2. and two. Good pitch right there. Challenge him with a fastball. Th- 
Three and two the count. The Ute shortstop. Came into the game with a 3.06 average. He is out of uh, San Diego. And the pitch. Ball fouled back. Just got a piece of that. We talked about how Sudrath only has four walks on the year. So it would be uncharacteristic of him to walk Richardson after coming in the game for Burrup. Full count pitch. Big pitch right here. Sue playing behind the base runner. And the pitch, that ball hit him. Came in and got him on the elbow. Didn't and look so like he, he made much of an attempt. The yeah. umpire had a couple of words for Richardson as he trotted down to first, but that wasn't a wild pitch that just got away from him. He was coming inside, and <laughs> after you know, the it was interesting because the umpire was having a conversation, and then he was shaking his head like he went out, threw the ball back out to Sutherland, and came back with shaking his head like. Maybe I should have made, you know. Well, he already know, called, all, you know, for those who weren't yeah. listening earlier, he already called one of the Ute hitters out for not trying to get out of the way of a pitch and called him out. That situation was a fastball. Caught him on the elbow. Of course, he's wearing this monstrous elbow pad. Here's the first pitch to, to Kiersey, and that ball's looped into left field. Kyle Dean coming over. He dives, and he makes the catch for the out. Great play by Dean. Has had to go into the left center field alley and saved one run, pop, probably two right there for the Cougars. That was a big catch by Dean right there. That'll do it for the Utes in the inning. No runs, no hits, two runners left on, nobody, no errors. And we are through six complete now, 3-3, Utes and Cougars, on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. Hey, BYU baseball fans, you are listening to BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Here's Brent Norton. Go Cougs. LaPiana on the hill for the Utes as we go to the seventh. Noah Hill, who's two for two in the ballgame. And he scored two of the Cougars' three runs. We'll step in. First pitch outside, ball one. Hill, the junior out of Flower Mound, Texas. There's three Flower Mound, Texas products on the team. Noah Hill and the two Jacobson brothers. And the count now one and one on Hill. Big inning right here for the Cougars against uh, LaPiana. Pitches outside. Both these teams wouldn't be afraid to use their normal bullpen guy at the back end of the rotation with Utes don't play till Friday. Cougars play on Thursday. The Cougars would love to get a couple of an inning or so in for, you know, Zimmerman and, and a couple of those guys. Well, Zimmerman showed that he's got the ability to come in And throw two or three innings for you. Hill fouls that pitch off. He did that with a couple runners on base against Pepperdine last weekend to pick up another save. Showing that he's more than just a one-inning wonder out there. And with Burrup giving such a good start for the Cougars, you've got all the choices. Sudruth coming in last inning, only needing to get one out. Two balls, two strikes, pitch to Noah Hill, and that ball's fouled up and out of play. Noah's, the more bats he's gotten here in this last little stint where he's been playing, you can see the confidence growing, swinging the bat well. Looks pretty good. Both of his base hits tonight, putting good swings on it, seeing the ball really well. Hill 5'9", 180-pounder. Came in as a utility infielder, and this year they've moved him to a, a backup catcher role. And here's the 2-2 from LaPiana. The ball hit up the middle. Up is going to be through for Noah Hill's third hit. All singles. I think all three. No, his second hit was in right center, but his first hit was up the middle too. So Noah swinging the bat well here as a leadoff single here in the seventh. Well, if you can get that kind of production out of your number nine guy, setting things up for Anderson and Perns and Schneeman and Sue, I mean, that's exactly what BYU's trying to do. And Hill, I mean, that's just... Icing on the cake when your catcher can provide that kind of offensive lift. Utes with a right-hander up quickly in the pen. 
as Anderson will step in. We'll see if the Cougars might bunt here, move that potential go-ahead run up. They've got him swinging away in the first pitch over for a call strike. Anderson's had a couple of walks the last two at-bats, not been able to swing it that much tonight, but not getting the bunt sign at least on that pitch. Anderson stepping in against uh, LaPiana. And here's the lefty's pitch, and Anderson tries to bunt it down the first baseline, but foul. So Brennan uh, unable to execute there on the sacrifice. Instead of a sacrifice, it almost looked like more of a push-type bunt, like yeah. a, a bunt for a base hit. Which is kind of odd because now he's in the hole 0-2. Yeah. He can't bunt right here. He's not going to square around. So if you're going to bunt in that situation, you know, sack him over. Don't worry about trying to pick up a base hit. 0-2 the count. Lapiana looks over at uh, the first base bag, and the pitch is outside. A ball and two strikes. Uh, Anderson, the senior at a Draper, with uh, two home runs this year and 19 RBIs. As Brennan, the right-handed hitter, will get back in the box. And here is Lapiana's pitch. That's inside corner, strike three call. It's a good pitch by Lapiana right there. Came inside on Anderson. Looked like he was kind of hopping out of the way a little bit, almost to give the impression that it was inside and nearly hitting him. But umpire saw that differently. Gave Lapiana the benefit of the doubt. It's a big strikeout right there. Jared Perns now steps in. Perns is a two for three. Pair of singles. He struck out his last time up. And a throw to first base. And uh, Noah Hill back in safely. Looks like the wind has almost changed directions a little bit. Kind of coming in from the right field foul pole over to left. Yeah, it's going straight out of left field right now. Definitely switching. Earlier in the first, second Innings, it was going to right center. Now Here's almost dead left. Pitch to Perns is fouled off. 0-1 oh, the count. Coors with one in the third, two in the fifth. The Utes, a three-run home run in the fourth inning. and Both teams with eight base hits. They've played airless baseball. Good ball game here today at uh, Smith's Ballpark. Cougars won game one of this series, uh, 7-6 to six in Provo. They'll play two more times after tonight. Perns a little looper. That ball's going to drop into right field. And Perns going to try for two. Here comes the throw, and he'll slide in safely. G- Garrett Perns, not with the prettiest hit right off the end of the bat, but right over the first baseman's head for a double. And he was looking to the entire way. As soon as he saw that, Right fielder had to run that far to get that ball. He was wheeling it around. Great job of base running. Now you got runners on second and third with one out. Perfect situation for Schneeman. And Perns continues to be the guy. Him and Sue definitely swinging the hot bats for BYU and carrying this offensive load this first part of the season. You know, of the nine hits, Perns has three, Hill has three, and Sue has two. It's right there. As Sneeman steps in. Daniel 0 for 2 is hit by a pitch his last time up. Utes playing the infield back here in the seventh. So any kind of ground ball hit to sword or second, the Cougars will take the lead in the first pitch. Fastball on the outside corner for a strike. This is where we've seen, again, Kramer a couple times in the first matchup between these two teams having some trouble receiving the ball. LaPiana... In the, in the first inning that he pitched, when he came in relief of Pierce, had a couple wild pitches. We'll see what happens right here if BYU can take advantage of something like that. There's the pitches. There's a squeeze, and they're going to get – no, hell no, they're not. Well, yes, they are. They're going to tag out one of the runners at the second base as Schneeman just unable to get the bunt down on the suicide squeeze attempt right there by Mike Littlewood. Two men out. 
Pitch was a ball, tough one to bunt. But Sneeman, uh, that is a strike, so it's 0-2 the count now on Sneeman as he did offer it the pitch on the bunt. Well, and with Hill being a lefty again, that's something he can't see. Or uh, Excuse me, with Lapiana, the left-handed yeah. pitcher, Hill on third base. So Lapiana cannot see the, the runner on third, and so Hill broke as soon as Lapiana went to home. But it didn't look like Schneeman really had a chance or at least tried to get the bat out there on that. It was an outside pitch and just no chance for Hill to do anything. Here's the 0-2 to Schneeman. That's up high for a ball. So the Cougars runners at second and third with uh, one man out. Now they just have a runner at third with two men out. Hill was caught, but he ran back to the bag at third base, and uh, the base runner, Perns, was standing on the bag. Yeah, you, you got to advance and just make sure you've got a guy still 90 feet away in that situation. A ball and two strikes to Schneem and see if he can pick him up here. That pitch is down low for ball two. Now, you I'm, know, if you're Perns, when, the minute you see that bunt not executed, you've got to be thinking about getting back to the bag at second base, but I'm not sure if he was running with his head down or whatever. Well, and again, you know, most coaches in that situation, the, if, if a guy's going to get in a rundown, they, you want your runner to advance yep. to the base, and yeah, they're going to just run him right back to it, but at least you've got another guy now who's right there in scoring position. But 2-2 uh, two, two pitch to Sneeman's up high. There was nobody at third base covering, however, when, you know, Hill was running back into the bag. Shortstop was still out hovering around second base, and the third baseman yeah. was charging home when, yeah. the, when the squeeze was attempted. I think we were both caught off guard by the call yeah. in the first place. I mean, it was early in the count, and uh, again, Lapiana has a tendency, at least he's shown a tendency so far in this game, with Kramer being uh, a little bit suspect behind the plate earlier in the season on pass balls. 3-2 pitch, little looper. Shortstop going out, shallow left field. He's there and makes the catch. For the out, and the Cougars are retired. No runs, two hits, no errors, one man left. We are through six and a half, 3-3 Cougars and Utes on your new skin BYU Sports Network. Back here at Smith's Ballpark in Salt Lake City. We're all tied up 3-3. Cougars, the golden opportunity. Their runners at second and third, one man out. The squeeze play backfires on them. And then Sneeman pops up to end the inning. And Riker Tom will step in. He is uh, one for three on the day. He singled his last time up. Two, three, and four in the order for the Utes as we go to the bottom of the seventh. Jake Sudrath on the hill for the Cougars, and the first pitch is outside ball one. You mentioned Coach Littlewood likes to squeeze in those situations with a left-handed pitcher up there. It was a good opportunity and perhaps because of BYU's inability so far, you know, earlier in the season to produce in those clutch situations, maybe Coach Littlewood yep. wanted to manufacture something right. there, see if he could get that one run across right now. But in that situation, Schneeman not able to get a pitch that he could handle. And, you know, Noah Hill was kind of left out to dry. He didn't have anywhere to go. 2-0 and all the count to uh, Riker Tom. And here is Sudras 2-0 pitch. Ball hit one hopper out Ooh. to Sneeman. He's got it. Great play by the Cougar shortstop. That was an absolute bullet that he had to go to his left by about a step made for out number one. That's impressive. I mean, that ball was just ripped. And it just stayed on left. the ground. Yeah. It was low. He didn't have much time to react on that. Not only that, spun around. That ball carried him to his glove side and had to spin around and put a good throw over to Sue for that first out. Sudrath taking some pressure off. One man down, Oliver Dunn now steps in. First pitch from Sudrath, and that's fouled back into the screen. Are we headed to another extra inning ball game just like we had a few weeks ago down in Provo? Never know. Sure looks that way. Looks like we might be going that direction. No balls in a strike to Dunn. He's one for three today. Single in the first struck out and uh, on in the fielder's choice his last time up. 
There's a slider that's a little bit inside. One ball and one strike. And we talk about the temperature and the length of the game. And the longer it goes on, it does start to play a little bit of a factor here in terms of the players out there pitching. Here's the 1-1. Over for a call strike. There you see that slider. Isn't much a backdoor slider. That was right in the fist of Dunn. Good pitch by Sudra. Great spot. Handcuffed, and there's not a lot that many left-hander head and hitters are going to be able to do with that pitch. Down and in. Here's the one-two from Sudrath. That pitch all the way back to the screen. Tried to again bust him inside. And bounce it up over uh, Hill, the catcher. So a ball and two strikes. We've got to be careful of those inside pitches. We've had two hitters now that have tried to lean into those inside pitches and get a free pass. The umpires called them on it once, didn't the other time. 2-2 pitch. Ball fouled up and off the foot of Dunn. Dunn was the one that was called out. And you can see he's got that armor all the way up and down that uh, right arm. And he kind of hangs over the plate. Dunn took one right off the foot. As he is uh, trying to walk it off there at home plate. That's yeah, painful. Fouled that one out. was another inside pitch from Sudrath. Looks like he just hit it right off the f- front of his right shin. Now he's got to step back in there with two strikes and focus in on trying to get a hit here. Sudruth has got to use that to his advantage. Sudruth really continuing to just pound him inside last three pitches. And if he's smart, he'll come right back in there again. Dunn's thinking about it. Two balls, two strikes. And here is Sudruth's pitch. Boy, just a little Oof. bit down, three and two. Good spot. This Jake, point, Jake Dunn. Sudrath, a 6'4", 200-pounder, as we've mentioned, out of a Queen Creek, Arizona, by way of Mesa Community College. And the three, two. That's down low. So a one-out walk given up to Dunn, and that will bring up a Braden Benedictus to the plate. Benedictus uh, out of Taylorsville, a redshirt freshman. He is uh, one for three today. He also singled in the first inning. Only the fifth walk issued by Sudrath this year. Doesn't do that very often. Dunn hobbling down to first base. Not going to be a threat to steal, I wouldn't think, after hitting that ball off his shin. Yeah, he looks like he's still pretty hobbled over there. Yeah, he's he's not doing too good. And the fact that it's getting pretty chilly out there doesn't help either. Benedictus steps in. And the Utes with a runner at first base, one man out. And here's the pitch from Sudrath, and that's over for a strike. Brent's over here showing me the, the jazz score. <laughs> Everybody in Utah is keeping track of every game right now. It's that time of year, isn't BYU it? BYU baseball and the jazz, right? Oh, I'll tell you what. <laughs> it's the best time of year right here. No balls in a strike. And the 0-1, a swing and a miss. 0-1-2. Took a little something off that one that time. This little curveball on the outside corner. 79 miles an hour. Jumps out ahead of the Benedictus right here. De La Forest is on deck. That's, that's a couple of pretty good names back to back. It's a lot of letters for the uh, 0-2. For the jersey to hold. Sudris pitch up a little bit high for ball one. Bottom of the seventh, 3-3, three, three, Utes and Cougars. Uh, we're on AM 960 as well as the BYU radio. Tonight, the Santa Clara series coming up. We'll be back on the air uh, Thursday night, 5.55 for 
pregame before the first pitch at uh, 6.06 at uh, Larry Miller Field in Provo. You talk about great times of the year for sports, and we had the College Basketball National Championship last night, and you've got Major League Baseball in full swing, college baseball in full swing, and you got the NBA postseason upon us pretty soon. Doesn't get much better. I think October's probably that other month of pitches s- just off the plate. That sweet yeah. month for sports, you know, when you've got football going, college and pros and basketball, po- basketball, or, yeah, you know, starting. starting, and then you got the postseason yeah. for baseball kicking into full swing. But right now, this is. It's a pretty good time of year. Two and two the count. Sudruth. From the stretch, here's the pitch. Ball fouled off. Benedictus right on that pitch. Just fouled it straight back into the screen. So are the Jazz winning? That's the question we didn't answer. The Jazz are winning by 13 now. All right. Playing the Lakers tonight. Benedictus, a young man, Taylorsville High School product. And the 2-2 pitch, that ball hit him. That ball hit uh, Benedictus. Interesting, uh, Noah Hill caught the, caught the ball, might have just glanced him off him. So a walk and a hit batter. And Davis... De La Forest will step in. He's 0 for 3. That was actually a situation where that ball was inside. Benedictus was trying to kind of turn inside, rotate in to avoid that one. Just barely glanced off the inside of his left arm. Dangerous situation right here for Sudrith. Runner in scoring position with one out. And here is Sudra's pitch. That's over for a strike. De La Forest went went in to the dugout between innings and put a big old hoodie on. He's got he's got the long sleeves coming out of the baseball jersey and a. How cold was it this morning? You said it was 21 degrees, but it's it's not that cold here not, tonight. Not yet, not 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 yet, but it's uh, definitely cooling down pretty quickly. No balls and a strike. Here's the pitch from Sudrath. Fly ball, right field. Brock Hale going over, and that ball is a foul ball, foul ball. Boy, it wasn't foul by much, but it was a foul ball. The first place umpire got out there in pretty good position. It was close. Right on that 315-foot short porch out there down the line. I mean, there's an umpire right there, and yeah. he's got a much better angle than I do, but I got to tell you, I thought that looked that looked fair to me all the way. I mean, we've got people in the stands upset about that call, <laughs> jumping all over him. I mean, he was right on the line, yeah, and, and that wall it. comes in. It angles in about 20 feet. Yeah. In from the line, it takes a sharp turn and comes into the 315. And that ball was slicing towards the foul line. So it must have just barely caught. You know, and, and the interesting thing, the, the umpire delayed. He, he made sure he was going to make the right call. When that ball landed, it took him another second or two to make the call. Well, that, that's a big break right there for Sudrath and the Cougars. That would have scored two runs. Yeah. No balls, two strikes now. Sudworth really needing a strikeout here, a ground ball for a double play. There's a check swing over into the Cougar dugout. Fans are still chirping at the umpires for that call. It is a rivalry game, right? No doubt. I mean, everybody's emotions a little higher. Yeah, there's a lot on the line, literally right there. 0 oh, 2. And the pitch. Ball fouled off again. Well, Sudruth gave up the walk and the hit batter after he retired the first batter of the inning on a ground out. So Jake right now, he was an All-American last year at Mesa Community. had 17 saves, so he's used to being in this situation. Yeah, but he's dug a hole for himself with the walk and then the hit, hit by pitch right there on... The Benedictus, Delorifus right here, putting together pretty good at bat. Here's the 0-2 little looper out towards Sue. He's got it. 
His only play, he tries to throw to second base and hits the runner. Sue right there should have just gone and stepped on the bag at first. Instead, he tries to get the runner at second base and hits the runner right in the back. That'll be an error on Sue. Yeah, I'm a little confused at why he decided. I mean, that was a sharply hit ball. He had time, it looked like, to get back to the back to the no, bag himself. No doubt. And Sudreth was also working his way over to the first base to be able to take the toss if Sue needed to get it to him. But that would have would have been a huge out right there for Sudreth, the Sudreth, that's going to be it for Sudreth. We're going to have a reliever for the Cougars. We'll take a 90-second break. Be back with more Cougar baseball action on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. Back here as we Cougars bring in Rhett Parkinson. Parkinson on the year. He's had he's been good for the Cougars. This will be Rhett's uh, 12th appearance on the year. Tied for appearances with Zimmerman. He's thrown 12 in. He's given up 10 hits. Opponents only hitting 227 off the lefty, and he will face the lefty, Wade Golden. And the Utes have the go-ahead run at third base here in the bottom of the seventh. They've done all this on a walk, a hit batter, and an air. And the first pitch from Parkinson is outside ball one. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure coming in right now. Bases loaded, one out, tie ball game, late in the game. Cougars playing back up the middle looking for the double play ground ball. Sue's even back at first base with the the lefty golden up there. And here is Parkinson's pitch, and that's down low ball two. So two golden. balls and no strikes. Golden right here sitting on a 2-0 pitch. He's one for three today, single back in the fourth. Pitch from Parkinson, inside ball three. Cougars, Kenny signs another lefty just beginning to throw. As BYU kind of self-destructing here in the seventh. Yeah, this is a this is a tough situation right now for BYU. 3-0 pits. That's outside ball four, and the Utes take a 4-3 lead. Two walks, a hit batter, and an error, and the Utes have taken the lead. Yeah, this is one they're going to look back on. Wonder what happened. Sudrith, who's not a guy who normally walks, giving two free passes with the hits batter, and then the walk, and then that odd play by Sue that we talked about earlier that loads the bases, and now Parkinson's still looking for his first strike. Kramer steps in. First pitch from Parkinson is fouled straight back. Parkinson has been so good this year for the Cougars. Uh, has given up six walks in 12 innings, but 10 strikeouts. So the Utes now with a 4-3 lead in the bottom of the seventh inning. They've done that without a base hit here in the inning. And here's the 0-1 pitch. Curveball drops in knee high for a strike, 0-2. Good pitch right there. By Parkinson coming with the off-speed pitch. Kramer was sitting on a fastball with bases loaded. And he was looking for something he can drive. Parkinson now just needs to focus on getting one more out right here and putting himself in a situation to kind of stop the bleeding. Here's the 0-2. Ball hit down, foul down the third base side. Cougars still back up the middle in the infield looking for the ground ball that they can turn to. There's only certain situations where you really tell your pitcher, we need a strikeout out of you. This is one of those. (laughs) This is one where you really want to put something in a spot where he's not going to do any damage, maybe get him to chase something, being ahead 0-2 in the count. Here's Parkinson's pitch. 
Ball gets away from Hill, pops out of his glove, but runners in, unable to advance. And I was just thinking after, you know, talking about that, that's the danger. When you're head 0-2, some guys like to bury that curveball. And with a runner on third base, you know, that's the thing you have to worry about is not trying to be too fine to where you've now got a wild pitch and another run scores. Parkinson, 1-2 count. Here's the pitch. Swinging. Oh, just foul tipped out of Noah Hill's glove. Yeah, he was frustrated that he didn't hang on to that one. Kind of slamming his fist into his glove afterwards, knowing that would have been a huge, huge out for BYU. Still up on the count, though, 1-2. Shea Kramer, the uh, freshman, he's listed as an infielder or outfielder, but he's behind the plate the two games against BYU. One-two pit, there it is, strike three. Good curveball right in on the hands of Kramer for out number two. Well, he threw that in the perfect spot. Left-handed pitcher coming against the right-handed hitter with that big breaker that came down and in on Kramer. Nothing he's going to do with that. If anything, he'd foul that off. Great pitch, clutch pitch by Parkinson after that that walk to put the Utes ahead by one. And he's got to go to work here. Can't relax with two and bases loaded. Miguel steps in. He hit the three-run homer earlier in the ball game in the first pitch over for a strike. Other games, UCLA leading LMU. That's at LMU 6-1 in the fourth. Gonzaga, Washington State all tied up at 2-2. That's quite a rivalry up there, Pullman and uh, Spokane. Some bragging rights going on between those two. Irvine leading San Diego 1-0. Stanford leading Santa Clara 7-1. And Pepperdine fell to CSN. Swing and a miss, 0-2. Well, Parkinson threw his first four pitches for balls, walked in the Potential go-ahead run since then. He's, he's thrown nothing but strikes. He has. And that's almost a situation where you wonder if he got enough time in the pen to warm up because he's been lights out. Just pinpoint accuracy these last two batters. But nowhere close. Pitch to McGillis. A swing and a miss. And he goes down on strikes. And Parkinson strikes out the last two youths. He used with one run, no hits, one error, three runners left on base. We are through seven. 4-3 Utes over the Cougars on your new skin BYU Sports Network. BYU Baseball is brought to you by Lube Duck. Quick oil change, emissions, and inspections. Now let's take you out to the ballpark with Brent Norton. Yeah. A couple of new pit uh, Kramer changes. Kramer goes from catcher to left field. Christopher Rowan comes in behind the plate, and Wade Golden moves from left field to first base. So Benedictus is the only guy that came out, and he was the guy that looked like a gold lover against the Cougars last time out. That's right, and now we've got Austin Moore pitching the right-handed junior from Huntington Beach, California, from Orange Coast College, who also threw against uh, BYU in the first game for an inning or so. I think he did. As Brian Sue will lead it off, ground ball right to the third baseman on two hops. He's got it, and throw to Sue. He did put the tag on for the out. First baseman was pulled off the bag, and Sue tagged as he came by. You know, and as a base runner, it's so tough to react, but if he had gotten down, slid right. head first, he's safe easily. Yeah, there's no way for him to know that. Usually the coach lets him know, but even then, you know, that ball was just tailing a little bit. From the third baseman right there, great play by uh, Golden, who just moved in to play first base to make that tag. One pitch, one out. First pitch to Brock Hales over for a strike. Austin Moore, the pitcher for the Utes. Moore, one win, one loss. 5.73 earned run average. He's thrown 11 innings this year for Utah. And the pitch to Brock Hills outside for a ball. Moore, this is his eighth appearance. He's thrown 11 innings, given up 12 hits. Only has two strikeouts in those 11 innings. 
Opponents hitting 293 on the right-hander. J.C. transfer. And that ball's hit hard. Shortstop tries to backhand. Can't come up with it. And Brock Hill on first base. I think they'll go air there. The uh, Richardson tried to backhand that ball. It was hit very hard by Hale. Yeah, it's a tough play right there. Hale did a great job jumping on that pitch and then getting down the line. He didn't even try to make a play. It was just too late. And that's a big, big base runner for BYU with one out trying to find a way to tie this game up again. Kringland steps in. Keaton is one for three. Strikeout, a single, and he flew out to center field his last time up. And the pitch to Moore. That ball hit pretty well. Right fielder going back a few steps. He is right there. And he will make the catch for the out. So Kringlin, first pitch swinging, flies out to right for out number two, and that will bring Favero to the plate. Pretty good swing right there by Kringlin. Third baseman number 25, Nate Just didn't quite get that up in the jet stream. The win now, as you mentioned, still shifting to pretty much straight out of left field. Right. Almost straight across the diamond now. May have been actually hurting that ball rather than carrying it like it did earlier when Miguelis hit that three-run home run. Favero steps in for the Cougars. He is looking for his first hit. He's 0 for 3. And Nate hits his ball hard right at the second baseman. He's got it on a couple hops. And, boy, the Cougars really going aggressively. First pitch swinging there in the inning. They're retired. No runs, hits one air and one man left. We are through 7.5. Utes 4, Cougars 3 on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. On the strength of an unearned run, the Utes uh, lead this one 4 3 as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. That unearned run came back in the last inning. Cougars having a hard time keeping those balls within the bullpen area out there as we've had to call several timeouts to retrieve balls. And Rhett Parkinson's first pitch to Matt Richardson's outside ball one. Usually we'll keep a guy out there and maybe back him up just to keep those balls from hopping into the field of play because it'll ricochet off the wall and then head toward the field. Here's the 1-0 pitch, a swing and a miss, one and one. Richardson uh, is one for two today, single in the, in the uh, third inning. Flew out to right in the fourth, was hit by a pitch in the sixth. And the 1-1 pitch, ball fouled off. The Utes have left nine guys on through the first uh, seven innings. Show you the difference with that. Cougars left 14 on through the first seven down. Pepperdine on Saturday. That's been a big problem so far this year. Couple clutch hits so far tonight. Little looper down the left field line. That ball will find the seats. Perns had that two out RBI hit back in the third inning. They got the Cougars on the board, and then Sue had the the single that scored two to tie it up. That was with, I think, two men out also. That had two outs as well, so you like to see that. Just can't have those kind of innings like uh, BYU did last inning, giving a run without a, a hit. One two pitch, just a little bit inside two and two. And your Parkinson's been dialed in after that first walk that he issued when he came in with bases loaded and one out. He's been right around the plate, finished off that last inning with two straight strikeouts. Two two pitch. Swinging, strike three. Make that three in a row. Yeah, three straight strikeouts by Parkinson, and that will bring up uh, Deshaun Kiersey. And that's the thing that we talk about, you know, some of these guys in different situations. You know, Parkinson, uh, again, not knowing how much time he had to warm up, come in for Sudrath, I mean, kind of rushed him into that situation because after that first batter, I mean, he, he wasn't even close with that first batter with those first four pitches issuing that walk, and since then it's just been nothing but strikes. First pitch to Kiersey is a swing and a miss. Sean Kiersey is one for three today, which includes a single and a walk. Single came back in the first inning. 
Brett Parkinson, the lefty, out of Wellsville, Utah. Fastball just a little bit outside. Uh, Parkinson, 87, 88 miles an hour, but able to really pinpoint has uh, pinpoint his control other than the first battery face yeah, that when was he it. walked in the potential winning run. Here's the 1-1. One, one. That's up high, 2-1. He's got good pop on his fastball, as you mentioned, around 87, but he's got late life to it as well which I think has been kind of catching some of these Ute hitters off guard. 2-1 pitch, fly ball. Hearns going back in center, way back. He's not going to get there. It's up on the wall, uh, two hops, and here comes Kearse. He's going to try to go to third. Here comes a throw. He is wow. out. Great throw by Sneeman. What a relay. Put the relay right on the bag, and it was waiting for Kearse as Kearse dove into the uh, mitt of uh, Nate Favero. That was such a great play because Perns, he was just absolutely full sprint as that ball made it over, but he was able to get the ball pretty quickly and get that and made a perfect throw to Schneeman who just fired a strike to Favero right on the money. That's a big out for BYU. 8-6-5 with a put out, two men down, and the hitter Riker Tom Steps in. Well, we've seen Sneeman's arm. It's big time, and I'll tell you, he, he showed it right there. That was great relay. Quick turn. He was probably, what, 40 feet out on the outfield grass and rocked and fired. And that ball, Favero had his mitt on right in front of the bag, and that ball hit the mitt. It was right there. It was right there. And he had to put it right on the spot because uh, – Kiersey was just diving head first. Was it didn't look like even when he it looked like he was going to beat that throw out, and then all of a sudden Schneeman just threw a rocket. Ball fouled up and out of play. Well, when Kiersey rounded second, it looked like he was maybe thinking about stopping, but then he turned it on, and it just took a great play by by Schneeman to cut him down. No balls and two strikes to Riker Tom. We're in the bottom of the eighth. Utes leading four to three. Both teams now with nine base hits. And there's a ball grounded foul down the third baseline. Boy, you talk about a ball carrying well. That ball hit off uh, Kiersey's bat. Like you said, uh, Jarrett Perns, was, he was going all out. Yeah. Re- got a good read on if that he, ball. Couldn't he, run it down. Yeah, he, he definitely did. And uh, Kiersey put a charge into that one. May have been aided a little bit by the breeze here, but. Oh, two pitch a little bit inside for ball one. And that's a critical out, too, because a huge difference between having a running runner on third with one out versus nobody on a two outs and just a one-run lead for Utah. BYU, if they have any hope of getting back into this into the bottom of the inning. One and two, here's the pitch. Ball fouled off uh, the screen right behind home plate. Utes six wins, 20 losses on the year, but they've been, uh, after losing their first 13 of the year, they've uh, played over 500 baseball. And like we mentioned, having beat Oregon State two of three here, Oregon State the number one ranked team in the nation coming into last weekend. There's a swinging strike three, and Kriker Tom goes down. And the through, we're through eight, 4-3, Utes leading the Cougars on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. Hey, sports fans, this is Jordan Wood, pitcher for the BYU baseball team, and you're listening in to the new skin BYU Sports Network. We go to the ninth inning. Jake Brown's going to be brought in to pinch hit for Kyle Dean. He'll be followed by Noah Hill, and then the top of the order, and Brennan Anderson. Cougars down to their last at bat as they're down by one run, four or three here. Both teams with nine hits, both teams with one error in the ball game, and the first pitch from Austin Moore's outside ball one. So Brown with an opportunity here to get the Cougars a base runner. Jake Brown hitting 222 on the years, only had 18 at bats, and the 1 0 pitch is way outside for a ball. 91 on the fastball right there by Austin Moore. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if Moore right here goes 3 0. It's going to be a little bit of pressure. You don't want to put that tying run on base with a free pass to lead off the inning. Pitch is over for a strike. 
Two and one. I looked a little bit up. Got the benefit of the doubt on that one. Brown didn't like it either. Utes a pair of right-handers in the bullpen ready, or getting ready. As Brown batting from the left side steps back in. Brown a big swing and a miss. Two and two the count. As I mentioned, Brown only 18 at bats on the year. Has uh, four hits. One of those was a double. Has a couple of RBIs. Big kid, good power. 2-2 pitch down low, ball three. Moore is begging for that one. Usually that doesn't work to your advantage uh, when it comes to getting the next call. When the umpire sees you begging for that one. Three balls, two strikes. Jake Brown takes that one over for call, strike three. Brown had flipped the bat over toward the dugout. He thought that pitch was outside. One man out. That's a tough one. I mean, you want a guy to be aggressive up there. You need to get him on base at the same time, and that was a that was a definitely a borderline strike. Too well, good of a pitch to take. Too good of a pitch to take. Noah Hill, who's three for three in the game, all his hits have been single, steps in against uh, Austin Moore. First pitch to Noah is down low, ball one. Steady diet of fastballs, 92 miles an hour on that one from Moore. He's starting to feel the adrenaline right here. One ball, no strikes. Hill steps back in and takes another pitch down low, ball two. Now second baseman Oliver Dunn's going to come in and try to settle down his reliever a little bit. Two balls and no strikes to Noah Hill, who has uh, put up an outstanding performance tonight from the plate with three hits. And the pitch is inside ball three. Great at bat so far from Hill. He got to find a way to get a runner on some way, somehow. See if Hill can draw the walk. Yeah, no doubt Hill will be taking here 3 0. Top of the order up next with uh, Anderson. And the 3-0 pitch, and that's Oof. over for a strike. Blue's a little bit inconsistent this inning. That one looked down. He called those balls earlier in the count. He's hearing a little bit from the BYU dugout right now. and Looks like he's giving a little bit of a warning over there. Three balls and a strike to Noah Hill. Pitches grounded foul down the third baseline. Third baseman right on top of the foul uh, line, trying to make take away any kind of extra base hit. That ball was a couple of feet foul. I think some of those comments from the BYU dugout probably lingering from the last at bat on that marginal full count pitch they called as a third strike. 3-2 pitch, ball fouled up. Down the line, that will find the seats. And bounce its way back out onto the field. So Noah Hill with the start tonight behind the plate. And he's backed that up with three base hits. He's now hitting over 300 on the year. He'll one of those kids that will play anywhere for. He just loves the game and great attitude. Strike three called inside corner. And Hill arguing with the umpire. Two men out. Yeah, that's tough. Two called third strikes for BYU. Down to their last out. Not even putting a swing on either one of those. That one looked a little bit more center of the plate. May have been high. Hill's not a very tall kid, what, 5'9", I think? Yeah, 5'9". So he thought that was up, but apparently the umpire didn't think that. First pitch to Brennan Anderson's inside for a ball. Think that way, so BYU now trying to find a way to get on. Down to their last out here. Trying to get Brennan to 
Keep this game going. Brennan looking for his first hit. He's 0 for 2. Also has a pair of walks. He swings and misses. And the count now a ball and a strike on the Cougar second baseman. Nothing but fastballs as you would expect from Moore here. 90 miles an hour on that last one. Here's Moore's pitch and that's down low. Two and one the count on Anderson with uh, Perns is on deck. Cougars uh, game was tied until the bottom of the eighth as Anderson takes that one down. Low ball three. The Utes on a pair of wa- uh, let's see, it was a pair of walks, I believe, a hit batter and an air. Yep. No hits by the Utes in that inning, and yet they manufactured a run. Cougars walked in the run. Pitch to Anderson, a swing and a miss. And the count now goes full, three and two. I think it's the loudest uh, we've heard the crowd all night. Three balls, two strikes. Pitch to Anderson. That gets away from the catcher. Ball four. So the Cougars with a tying run now at first base and Jarrett Perns coming up. Probably the guy you would uh, want in this situation. Had the double last time. Picked up a couple hits earlier. And with Anderson's speed at first, two outs, he's going to be moving on contact. So a little bit of pulse left in the Cougars here. Utes playing very deep in the outfield, trying to take away the gaps here. Not letting anything get between them. Pitch to Perns is way high and inside for a ball. And now the third baseman, Riker Tom, is going to come in. Second baseman uh, Dunn tried this a couple of batters ago. Now the catcher is going to go out. Looks like they're going to bring in. They're looking down at the bullpen. Haven't made the move yet. No, Yes, they have. We're going to get a pitching change here. We'll be back in 90 seconds with more Cougar baseball on your new skin BYU Sports Network. Trenton Stoltz into the ball game. He's a big submariner, a senior. What is he, 6'4", 200-pounder? ERA of six. Certainly not dominating. Doesn't have uh, near a strike. You know, a strikeout ratio is, is not that great, but gives you just enough of a different look. Yeah, and that's exactly what Sudruth does for BYU, obviously. And with, uh, you know, two outs, you really don't need that much out of him. You've got Anderson on first, and you've got BYU's arguably hottest hitter up to the plate. Now, we also should remind you that he's got one ball on him right. from the previous pitcher before Kinneberg made the, case, the change and, and brought Stoltz in. Yeah, he inherits the 1-0 count as Pern steps in. Anderson at uh, first base for the Cougars. And Stoltz's first pitch to Perns. That ball's grounded out toward the second baseman. He's got it. Throws the first, and the Utes beat the Cougars here by a score of 4-3 to three to even up this series. And the Utes win here 4-3. to three. They get an unearned run in the bottom of the eighth. And, you know, Scott, uh, yeah, the Cougar uh, coach is not very happy with that home plate umpire. Anyway. You know, you have your ebbs and flows. You have ups and downs of the season. And right now the Cougars are kind of in one of those little downers. I mean, they just can't seem to get over the hump and and win the game, get the big hit, get the big pitch, whatever it takes to win a baseball game. Well, today was that situation. I mean, Burrup pitched well enough to stay in the game, came out when it was a 3-3 ball game. But BYU just imploded in that seventh inning with, uh, again, two walks, a hit batter, and uh, just couldn't get the job done. A couple of decisions on the base paths. And then also, you know, that, that you know, squeeze failed play. squeeze play right there. So, you know, it, that's the problem when you play close games. And, you, you know, one play can make a difference either way. And that's what happened tonight. That's what we saw happen in the first game between these two teams that went into extra innings. And it ended up being a few walks. 
that got BYU uh, back to where they allowed the Utes in in the ninth inning, and then it was a pass ball that BYU won on. So it's those little things that will end up making the difference when you have such a tight game like it was tonight throughout the entire contest. And like you said, it's those little things like the squeeze that's not executed. Uh, you've got Red Parkinson, who's a strike thrower, who comes in and throws four consecutive balls. And then was lights out yeah. right after that. Right, and then he retires, what, six, seven in a row. I yeah. mean, the guy, uh, it's just those little things that you you got to find your way to kind of break out of that. Right, and there's this, you know, we had a defensive play out there. We didn't know quite what happened when Brian Sue decided to try to throw it to second, ended up hitting the batter, or excuse me, the runner as he was sliding into second. But all those things, again, when you're playing such a close game and you don't give yourself that much room for error, that's when it can be difficult. And so BYU's been in that situation where they lose that 2-0 to zero ball game at Pepperdine. Even though you get a great outing by your pitcher, only gives up you know four hits from Jordan Woods, and you out-hit the opponent, you're just not capitalizing on those situations when you can. And it'll come back to bite you, and that's what happened. They just ran out of innings tonight, couldn't quite do it, and you got to hand it to the Utes. I mean... Uh, they stayed right there, kept BYU at bay after uh, giving up those two runs when Sue had that clutch hit with two outs. And, you know, Utah pitching kept BYU in check for most of the night. There were a couple hitters, obviously. You know, the standouts tonight, Noah Hill had a great game with those three hits. And uh, Perns with Perns, three. again, right. with, with three and, and with Sue with a couple as well. But other than that, it's the guys that you're really wanting to, to see break out, the Schneeman and the Andersons and the – Kringlins that you're really hoping start to get it back on track for BYU. Well, that's what they've got to do. I mean, you look at the middle part of that eight, uh, order, Sneeman 0 for 3 again tonight. Anderson did not have a hit. Brock Hill was 0 for 4. Favero 0 for 4. Uh, they give Dean a start. He goes 0 for 3. Kringlin uh, 1 for 4. You know, that middle part of the order just didn't do it for you. They banged out nine base hits, but it was mainly, like you said, it was mainly Sue. Uh, Perns and uh, and Hill doing all the damage. Yeah, and again, you know, hats off to Burrup. He had that one inning where he gave up the three-run shot uh, to McGillis, but other than that, he kept BYU yeah. right in that game and uh, came back in there and uh, and allowed. That's all you ask of your your pitchers. And we didn't know whether he was going to even go two or three innings. That's right. Let alone you know go into the sixth inning. So great job by Burrup at least you know battling through that after giving up that that home run to McGillis. All right Scott hey we appreciate you being with us again it's always fun man. Absolutely. We're going to catch up with you again here shortly all right. Sounds good. All right we're going to send it back uh, for a break and be back with uh, head coach Mike Littlewood right after this on your new skin BYU Sports Network. That's the last out. Great pitch on the outside corner he gets him. Now let's hear from the players and coaches in your BYU baseball postgame show. Here's Brent Norton on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Back here at uh, Smith's Ballpark as uh, the Utes beat the Cougars here 4-3. to three. Utes uh, had four runs on nine hits, one error. The Cougars uh, three runs, nine hits on one error. And the difference was in the that critical seventh inning as the Cougars uh, gave up that run. Ended up being the, the game winner. Joined by uh, Mike Littlewood. Coach, we appreciate you coming up. Uh, boy, tough loss. Again, just a lot of little things there in the seventh. Uh, probably the difference in the ball game. Yeah, I mean, just Brian was two steps away from an yeah. out. And then he we he was to, running toward the back. Yeah, and and then then he, he, you know, his middle infield instincts always tells him to get the lead runner. Yeah. And so, you know, those mistakes, you know, I'm okay with it, really. I mean, I'm not okay with the result, but it's a, it's a mistake of being aggressive, and that's fine. And, and if he makes a good throw, it's a great play, you know. So it, it's just a, that was tough. But, you know, we, we I bring Red in. It's a good matchup for us. And he, he throws four pitches, four straight balls. And then he's lights out after that. But I just told him after the game, it's, it's not about how your lights out after that. It's, it's about getting the job done when, the, when the, the play or the pitch is on the line. And that's what we haven't done. Or you look at tonight, we – Nate makes an error, Brian makes the error, we have a couple walks, and then we don't get the big hit again. And that's just, you know, and then we lose 4-3. We leave so much out there, yet we're still, we have the, we leave the tying run on first base to end the game. Just a little bit frustrating. Yeah, it just seems like the little things Mm -hmm. are just adding up and costing you games. I mean, not just, uh, you know, runs, but but games. Yeah. And and that's the frustrating thing. Burrup, uh, outstanding, 83 pitches, gave up that three-run home run was able to battle out of a, a, a couple of jams, and uh, I thought he was outstanding tonight. Well, you know, I would say I would say he was good. Um, 
he did a good job, but again, against when when he gives up the home run, he falls behind and then has to throw a cookie. And and I think it was just he'll do that every once in a while. He'll lose concentration a lot. Of, he'll do that with two outs and walk a guy. And those are the little teeny things that you need to get that we need to get better at. And before that, they had two um, seeing eye singles, and that's just the way baseball is. But um, you know, I I keep telling our guys if we just keep playing the way we are, and get that key hit and make the make the play make get a strike out when we need it just do those little things on the offensive pitching and defensive side we're going to be fine it's not like we're we're making major mistakes throughout the games you you hit it right on the head it's it's a little thing here it's a little thing there and against good teams and Utah's a much better team now than they were when we played them the first yeah. time and um, you can see a little bit more confidence but uh, you know head to head I feel like this is a team that we should come in and beat the squeeze play, the lack of execution there, Schneeman able to get tough pitch to get to. Tell us what you were thinking there and what you saw. Well, Schnee's been really struggling. Um, yes. I mean, I don't know if he's got a hit in the last month, really. And so, <laughs> I, I honestly, I just he's a good bunner. I want to take the pressure off of him. And uh, he's if the catcher catches it, he's got to get a bat on it. I mean, it's that simple. And it looked to me like he was kind of bailing out. That play was actually a double steal. We had uh, Perns was stealing there, and so we were, we were trying to get two runs on one bunt. And it's a high it's a high risk, high reward play. And I just, you know, went with my gut. It backfired, but um, I just, I felt like that was the, the the right play for us. If he lays it down on third base side, we have two runs. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, when you squeeze like that and you have your runner going, although there was one out, so it doesn't really matter if the runner's going at second base. If if the result was would have been the same, um, it's just a high risk, high reward play. And, and when it doesn't work, you don't look good. But but the way things have been going, you know, I applaud you. I think you've got you've got to kind of force the action because yeah. you haven't been able to get those big hits in, in at that time of the ball game. Well, and you know, we hit and run, um, bring in Noah, we start Noah, and that's a high risk play too because if we don't, if if Pernsey doesn't put that ball in play, Noah's going to be out by thirty feet because he's not a good runner. And so, but I just felt like let's let's just force the issue just a little bit yeah. and and push the pedal down and see what can happen and. Hey, it felt right. It felt like we had the right bunner. We had the right guy on second base. We had a, uh, a heady runner in Noah on third base, and it just didn't work out that time. But would I do it again? Um, probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, Perns and Hill both had three hits for you since uh, putting Hill behind the plate. He's been swinging the bat well, and, and Sue had the big two-out, uh, Great uh, two RBI hit, uh, yeah. battled up there. And, and uh, so some good things moving forward to Santa Clara this weekend. Santa Clara, an awfully good baseball team. They've really kind of turned it around this year. Um, getting beat uh, pretty good by Stanford tonight. They were down 7 to nothing. Who doesn't get beat by Santa Stanford Clara. this yeah. year? <laughs> uh, but they were down 7 nothing after one. But anyway, it, it's, it's going to be a good matchup this weekend. Yeah, you know, Santa Clara's got a, a really good starting pitcher fr- Thursday night, Stevie Wilson. I mean, he's 92-94. Ke- coming off Tommy John, he's probably on a little bit of a pitch count. But, um, you know, he's he's really, really good. And they're, they've got confidence um, – Coach Rusty Filter is there. Came from Stanford. Um, they're they're energized a little bit. You know, they they kind of got that first year thing going, and so it's it's a scary team to play this weekend. With with us, really, it's uh, three must wins for us. Yeah, I would agree with that, Coach. Well, hey, we appreciate you coming up. Uh, let's get back home, and uh, we'll see you on Thursday night. Okay, sounds good, Brent. You betcha. Head Coach uh, Mike Littlewood as the Cougars lose here tonight by a score of four to three to the Utes. Uh, Jake Sedrith takes the loss. He drops to two wins. And two losses, and Josh Lapiana picks up his first win of the year. He's now one and two on the year. Uh, time of the game: three hours and eleven minutes. I'd like to thank Scott Haas for his great commentary. Uh, Cole Wiesinger back at the station, and uh, remind fans we'll be back on the air Thursday, five fifty-five, with more Cougar baseball. With that, we'll say so long from Smith Ballpark in Salt Lake City.